Whenever a young 21 year old boy or girl wants to know what makes startup founders people like yourself successful they get generic we don't want to know what you've said already so intent here was to ask you non usual questions Okay, guys. Welcome, uh, all three of you. Thank you, guys, for coming. Pleasure. The very first thing we do when we call people is we try to get to know them in a manner that even they haven't spoken online or it's not available. So we don't want to know any of the stuff. You're all popular people. You have done interviews. Uh, we don't want to know what you've said already. So we'll try and nudge it in a direction. Uh, which will help us learn a bit more about you and uh, for the point of this show uh, there's no drama there's no like uh, you know trying to get a reaction out of anyone it's very much focused on a 20 year old boy or girl and when they are starting off uh, what can they learn from the learnings you've had without any filters uh, we did a venture capital episode and we came to the conclusion that 90 95% of startups fail you three have succeeded and you must have done something differently and today is about finding out what that could be and how other people can learn from it so maybe we can start with kazal tell us about your life from the very beginning from childhood all of that and take as much time and what others don't know yet Yes. What others don't know. I I think others don't know a lot about um, how confused and how um I would say I was still figuring it out for the longest period of time until eventually of course people started believing that this is the definition of success and that's for others, right? Um so I come from a humble middle class family. I was born and brought up in Chandigarh. Uh up till my marriage Chandigarh was the only place that I'd stayed in because the background that my parents come from or I've come from uh they're not they were not very pro sending women out for jobs or working so that's that's the uh, you know the childhood that I've experienced I was probably the first women in my family to go out and work uh but the only difference between the rest of my family and my parents was um uh, the conviction that both my parents had to ensure that our kids are going to be independent in Was life Was this in Chandigarh? In Chandigarh itself. Mm. So like I said up till my marriage mm. Chandigarh was my geographical mm. a very um, pretty geography. Beautiful. Mm. It's called the city beautiful, mm. right? I love that place. I think till today that's my favorite city. Mm. Uh but while I was growing up that wasn't the case because I I saw potential outside the city but I was not sort of allowed to explore it i was told that within this 5 km of radius whatever you want to do feel free to do it feel free to pick it up mm-hmm. um so that's how my um, you know what did your parents do so my father um continues to be a businessman um very interesting story i think first lessons in entrepreneurship is um i learned from him when i was in standard 8 yeah. um so big joint family uh my father is three brothers and five sisters so eight kids in total uh grew up with a lot of love um but eventually realized that a business that was being run by brothers when the parents were no longer their parents my grandparents were no longer there um there was certain friction that started coming in and there was a unfair distribution of wealth that happens everywhere no all the time i I it does there mm. are a lot of stories I experienced it for the first time and with my own father. Mm. Uh I think even at that point of time I couldn't imagine how can your own real you know blood do this to you. Mm. It was it was very complicated and my father I've seen him trust his brother like like elder brother he used to consider him his father because he wasn't there. And uh, that trust getting broken 
was like an eye opener for me. My first experience into any kind of relationship mm-hmm. and how uh, it has such a strong impact on who you are or your own ability or or the like you being able to trust anyone else after that. What age were you when uh, your father and his brothers thing happened? I was in standard eight, so I think. 12 13 13 14 years yeah. whatever that is yeah, yeah. i have a theory okay um, i feel like great entrepreneurs such as yourself when asked the question why are you successful often give the very generic rehearsed thing that is common to everybody but i feel like it's not because somebody is trying to lie but we don't realize ourselves what insecurities we have deep inside which yeah. pushed us to do a certain thing yes hence a little unusual background absolutely yeah so for that matter over the years and mm-hmm. this is very recent last 2 to 3 years what i've realized is the reason for my success is not because of anything that i've done in the last 5 to 7 years of building the business it actually goes back to my childhood and the way my attitude got shaped because of different events that happened and the perspective towards looking at some of those beat problems beat circumstances beat the attitude of how do you take a decision has shaped because of certain incidents which have happened which i might not have liked back then when i was going through them but truly have shaped me to be the person that i am so what changed in you guzzle the person were you a good student Age 12, I was 13. always a very good student. For that matter, till grade 10, I was amongst the top five hmm. in my class. I was the sports captain, and I was also the best artist in the entire school. Okay, so the overachieving so, an all-rounder, gazelle. overachieving Overachie- gazelle at <laughs> age 12, young yeah. girl going yeah. to a school in Chandigarh, watches her father and her brothers, his brothers, go through a difficult time. What changed in you pre and post that event? I think one thing that I realized for the first time in my life was the helplessness that I had in that situation. Helplessness around money? Right. Helplessness around comforting my father. Hmm. Money didn't come into the picture then because hmm. it took a while for me to realize that okay now money is also a problem. Hmm. Did Give your lifestyle right? change? Yes, it hmm. did because um what he got was under a lot of debt hmm. and we had to sort of as a family take care of that mm. um and when suddenly because it was an unexpected event in his life right he he broke down and i saw him breaking down for the first time a very confident fun loving person that he was i saw him getting very quiet not talking to people not going out and i i i could feel that he's going into depression right what i also saw at that point of time was the power that my mother had to correct the situations and she had been a housewife all through her life um it was beautiful um she pulled out all her gold saving sold it brought in some money helped papa put inventory back into the shop uh, into the shop what was the away. business so he was into accessories of all of these cars and trucks like okay. that entire business i still don't know how to Music call system. it out yeah 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 all of that right i still don't know I'll how to how to accurately describe the business and- um but that's what my brother still continues to do by the way oh, <laughs> uh but he was into that but um the division happened in a way that the shop that he got was under a lot of debt there were a lot of like Uh, receivables that had to be recovered from the market and we knew that was like a dead money already they he knew that it was a dead money it was not going to come and out. how much debt to attribute a number to it i think it would be anywhere between 40 to 50 lakhs back then Versus, that was a big amount like yeah, yeah. it I it crumbled more. the hell out of us income of 4 5 lakhs a year i don't think you'll be able to know. versus would an you? income of But around a lakh it. a month right yeah So that was the kind of debt that we were looking at, and he could clearly see for the next four to five years, this is not going to come in. Mm. And for me to put in inventory, I don't have anything left. So mm. what do I do? Mm. And with a little bit of money, that like the fact that a housewife can actually stand up and contribute to situations like this was again a first for me. Mm. Because usse pehle mama is always sitting at home; she is the caretaker. Mm. So my, um, you know, the belief that you, you as a woman. do have the ability to change things around because i hadn't seen anything like that in my family ever before 
came from her, that source of inspiration came from her. And I think that incident, of course, after that, things started getting better slowly and steadily. It took us almost five years to come out of that uh, debt to start making money. Um, but the conversations that I had with my father during those five years were beautiful. I think the first lesson that he told me was, Bache, money only comes home when the business makes profit. That was my first lesson ever. Mm. That if any business, if it's not making profit, the money doesn't come home. Mm. It, it might be generating revenue, but that keeps getting, you know, there's a cycle that is that exists in the business and it keeps rotating. Mm. Um, I also saw uh, my mom step up by taking tuitions for smaller kids, mm. trying to help the family. Mm. And I saw how they both beautifully came together. And that was another lesson that I learned in relationship building. Of how Today, do you want to be more like your mother or your father? Hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> I think I want to be more like my mother. Hmm. Uh, the courage that the that she showed in that situation, uh, when when Papa was breaking down, um, and the will that she had that this is not going to define the rest of our lives and we are going to turn it around, hmm. is the confidence that I still hold in myself. Hmm. I always refer back to that incident, and hmm. I whenever things are tough, I'm like, we will turn it around. Hmm. This doesn't define. Okay. Uh, who we are going to be. And then after 1230? Yeah, so after that, continue to grow. I think um, value of money is mm. what we realized then, mm. importance of money and mm. how do you spend it and how mm. do you, so there was a fixed budget in which you had to manage the house. All of, all of those learnings started coming in mm. during that time. Mm. Um, so as a student, I was doing well in school. Mm. Uh, Plus one, plus two ki bari hai. Mm. So good in maths, good in science, doing well. Mm. Mama had this dream that because it was a trend back then to be an engineer, right? Mm. Take up engineering and do mm. that. Mm. So well, good in maths and science, that. you're going to become an engineer. And mm. like, you're like, okay, <laughs> you don't know what's in store. And is that so, when you left Chandigarh? I didn't leave Chandigarh even then. Okay. <laughs> it goes on with me for the longest period of my mm. life. Mm. Um, I took... Uh, non-medical as subjects. Mm. Um, and I was also under this impression that, you know, everybody used to say that 10th tak achhe se padhai kar li, then you have some time free to yourselves. And I took it very yeah. seriously. See, that's a lie that everybody is told. 10th it continues kali. for life. Yeah, yeah. 12th, 10th, right? 12th, for it, undergrad. It's a never-ending thing, Rite. <laughs> get your first job, get the promotion, get married, have children, yeah. get your first house. <laughs> so after the 10th, you were still like grade A student. Till 10th. After that. Then life happened. changed for me completely. Yeah. I took that. After that, you can relax. But seriously. Did you come to terms with the fact that you're good looking after 10th? Oh, no, no. That's another story. Life itself. changed how? Good looking? So I in his picture. Like, where are, where's that yeah, going? Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure thank out. Thank you, Bolli. Yeah, 20 <laughs> year old entrepreneur, <laughs> kaise okay. hai? first they have to recognize why, the looks. Why I say that's a completely huh. different hmm. story because hmm. again, for the longest period of time, I thought I was the most horrible looking girl that could exist, especially wow. till grade 12. Okay. Um, reason being... You had bad self-image till grade 12. Uh, just on the beauty side of it. On the physicality of it. On, on the physicality of it. Mm -hmm. um, I had a dark complexion compared okay. to the other girls that I was studying uh, with. I was very tall and for the longest period of time, I thought this was something yeah. which is odd. Odd, yeah. Because... Uh, Last one in the in the row. Height me khada karate the school ah, me and like the the smallest one and all the girls used to early fit in the, the morning, first you know five your, six. Early in the morning you know your grade your last to oh, stand. Oh yeah, all the girls used to fit in like the first five rows and I used to be in the twelfth thirteenth row back with the boys right. When did that change? Um, that changed after uh, grade twelve mm. when I when the boy attended. The attention from the boys started coming in which and I started getting to? compliments. Again, Chandigarh, MCM DAV, which is a uh, girl's In college. Chandigarh, everybody is good looking. So differentiating is hard, right? Yeah. Stop. Not everybody, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> 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 but yeah, Chandigarh, um, uh. I don't know. them. For me, the definition of good looking has changed considerably from there. Uh, so I, I, I always I'm, used to think that I am not this person. All, all good looking people say that. Like, you know, good looking is relative and all that. 
Ask let me words. let me redefine it for you. Yeah. <laughs> did you get if your class had 20 Agarwal girls? Ji, you can yeah. imagine. Did you get more attention than majority of the class from men or boys? Till grade 10 no. Post grade 12 yeah. Post grade 10 yes. Okay. Okay, so grade 12 you went That actually college. worked well for me by the way <laughs> because it it did help me realize that I'm not probably as bad. I mean, it's it's okay. I think but even there it was my mother who what, changed it what around. What does that do for a girl? Like I I will never know this cuz I can't resonate with how a girl would feel but when a girl gets male attention and is appreciated or is wanted mm. from a very like emotional uh, lens is wanted by many people desirable mm. what does it do to you like how do you feel is it validation of something is it an insecurity going away how do you feel so for me it was an insecurity going away and me becoming more confident in my appearance so for example you have farewells right in mm-hmm. schools mm-hmm. farewell parties etc and you have to dress up and you have these events which are happening rampox etc all the kids participate i never used to participate in that i never had the confidence to go up the stage i never had the confidence that if i dress up and style my hair i will end up looking good so that that emotion was so strong that i used to avoid events like these my mother realized that i was trying to avoid some of these events because mm. i had i was image conscious and i felt i wasn't beautiful is when she brought in a lot of magazines at home and she started talking to me about a few models and i was not interested in in that space at mm. all mm. and just for me to feel a little more confident on how i looked she started complimenting me at home for anything like any weird thing that i'm what doing. year was this around 2000 this was in grade 12 i clearly remember 2004 2005 yeah around that time yes mm. okay so gazal got good looking grade 12th boy I started good look i was boy, still looking <laughs> the same boy started running boy. behind gazal went to college in chandigarh and what next yeah i wouldn't say boy started running behind me <laughs> nothing of that but yeah I a little bit of attention work what is he worked discovering in favor. <laughs> i know i don't and, know and may and may ye bolo ya okay now nah, this is my analogy no no yeah. this is not therapy no <laughs> yeah, no questions some of these years are sh- so formative like, yes yeah. so much yeah. happens Structured. on so many different levels be it your family side mm-hmm. be it the person that you're becoming be it your attitude towards things be it friends and all of that it forms you as a person and i mean 12th again was a very very difficult year for me because i realized that engineering was not something that i wanted to do mm. i also realized that my parents didn't have money and they figured from somewhere and they spent so much on the coachings that you have to take to prepare for the entrance exams etc and i was wasting that money i was becoming more confident on how i looked so on the image side of it I was realizing the importance of different relationships and how it's very important to have fewer people in life but have them really close to you. Mm-hmm. I also experienced a lot of friends moving away and the pain that it causes because somebody can be your best friend today mm-hmm. and tomorrow because the school changes the college changes uh you know the the they've picked up, you've picked up computers they've picked up something else that relationship changes and they move on in life. And are that you, was are you like that now did you become a person who really gives importance to loyalty when you watched what happened between your father and his brothers when you were 12 13 and has that continued at mama earth today is loyalty a big thing so to, till today loyalty is the most important mm-hmm. thing for me in any relationship be it with my employees be it with my family be it with my any kind of relationships or friends Mm. I if it gets broken once it's very difficult for me to be that same person mm. with that uh person unforgiving again. not unforgiving mm. but I don't forget it there's a difference forgive, I will forgive forget. the person mm. but I will not forget what happened mm. and that feeling stays with me because of which i'm not able to be that same person again do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing i think it's a very bad thing it does more harm to me than anybody else and 
I want to let it go. Mm. I've tried really hard that this should move away. I should be that person who doesn't care, etc. It's been almost like so many years now, but I haven't been able to change it a bit. That's why I, actually I I forget, but I don't forgive. So I, and and I forget like this. I don't remember anything. This is better. That's a blessing. I just don't remember that person. Forgetting that is the thing, same as forgiving loss, if you can't remember. That yeah, that's nothing. it's a blessing if you can do that. Trust me. And it's only because that work pulls me so hard that I I kind of forget everything which is around me. Okay. Just to finish on Ghazal. Okay, you went to college then. Yeah, so college I was like a very aggressive because of what had happened mm. uh with my dad and all of that time one thing that my mother told me was you know how you have these parties like i talked about the farewell parties or you want to go out with your friends for a for a movie or for a lunch etc everybody pulls in money right and when i had when you have to pull in money at that age you're asking your parents to give you some money or a pocket money right um and one day um like i saw some crazy discussion but i saw my mom telling me i don't have the money to give you so i can't go and this happened two three times uh, i don't know what the reason was behind that but either she actually did not have money or she wanted me to learn something out of it or value money more whatever that was um there's this one line that she said when i said that you know what you're not giving me money like how do i do everybody gets it i will make my own money so she said till the time you're taking money from anybody else whoever you are taking it from will make decisions for you The day you start earning your own money is the day you get to choose where to spend it on. And that is what I took with me all through the, these years and when I entered college I so college is very liberating right unlike school where you have a yeah, fixed yeah. routine college you Colored also clothes. have some time and you know you're I have going I had no idea I never went to college so <laughs> it's 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 liber, it's liberating in the sense that you have more time to yourself than you had while you were in school you also have a little more freedom because you have your own vehicle you have to go to college you have to take classes then you're taking coaching etc um i actually used that opportunity and i tried to find a job for myself because i said college i have to have my own money if i want to spend it my way how do i make money i started taking tuitions um jab tak kuch aur figure out nahi ho raha tha what are you teaching maths and science mm. <laughs> two students who were like pre 10th mm. t- till 10th i mm. would say little guzzles L- yeah little little guzzles like uh but i was teaching everything because my objective was no i was not focused on what i'm teaching i was yeah, focused no, on what's the money that's coming in and how much am i able to make right so tuition college on the side college tuition on the side mm. and that's the time when i also picked up my passion for computers because i had experienced it as an elective subject in grade 10 mm. grade 11 12th it got taken away from me and i was missing it like crazy so i realized that that's my passion so when i went to my parents saying you know engineering is not something that i want to do and i didn't sit for the entrance exams with a fear that what if i get through then i'll be pushed towards pursuing this as a career mm. so didn't do that uh and instead said regular college mm. koi high fi college nahi jana regular college that has minimal fee mcm dav it's a all girls college and on the side while i'll take tuitions i'll also figure out what is it that i want to do mm. and i picked up computers mm. i joined niit there was this course yeah, two and a half mm. year course called gniit mm. which basically gave you exposure towards multiple different languages and softwares mm. so that's something that i picked up and i thoroughly enjoyed it i loved it so much mm. that i went to my principal in college i said this is something that i'm doing i'm working really hard i want you to give me some time off college hours because mm. attendance used to be a concern there and you mm. had to have like a minimal uh i think she understood my passion or i don't know what happened she gave me that permission that okay you're mm. taking this another course you're doing really well there mm. every six months you used to get a score card that i had to submit at college but continue to do that mm. um but when i picked that up i had to leave the tuition so the money that was coming in the comfort mm. of of having your own uh, you know little whatever that 2 3 000 at that point of time it was right mm. but it was a lot it was mm. my i could choose to spend it on yeah. a dress that i want or go out with How my friends then gazel 18 18 yeah, 17 mm. 17 18 mm. 17 18 that money went away mm. but the hunger for money still stayed mm. so when i was taking this why is uh, that i've heard this from a lot of people i think ritesh will resonate 
if you make if one were to equate money with power yeah power corrupts above all else right the more power you have the more you want there is no concept of being satisfied by virtue of power mm mm-hmm. why do you think most people when they get it might be a bad analogy but the taste of money early want so much more in a very precocious manner where they want it so quickly what is it about money i think is early it independence on, early on absolutely that's one of the things early on in your journey when you taste money and you're able to and that's only my view i don't know hmm. uh, you're able to experience the comforts that it brings mm-hmm. right comfort could be a mental comfort that i have this cushion it could be the things that i'm able to buy it could be experiences that i'm able to take is it that or is it when your father split he was depressed lifestyle changed that's so ingrained in your subconscious that when you made money your subconscious was thinking that you're solving what happened to you as a 12 year old because the comfort is irrelevant everybody gets happy when they get things so i i would phrase it as i i went through the discomfort that happens when you don't have money at 12 13 right yeah the biggest trigger there yes and i also saw my dad break down hmm. so subconsciously in my mind money was a very very important tool for you to be happy so when you started earning it was not the shoe or bag you bought but oh no deep down it was that problem that you didn't want to go back and address in your own mind even slightly in getting alleviated in my mind alleviated. i was taking pressure off my parents by not asking them for money and that was my way to help them which i was not able to do when i was you know but i believe nikhil once you've truly been mm. in, and you know again poor is a, a relative term but i think once you've really been through trouble right like when you basically to put food on the table is uh, a challenge you never want to go back to it i think that feeling of remembering back um, uh, that specific period is it's such a stark feeling i think that's a very obvious thing though of If course of someone, course someone who is hungry knows the someone who was hungry correct knows the advantage of not being hungry today yeah i'm trying to get it what is the emotion that got ingrained in your brain when you were hungry mm, mm, makes sense makes sense like now that you've asked that question and i'm thinking about it i haven't thought about it earlier right um for me that emotion still st- it stayed even mm. when we started mama earth out because i did not have any experience in beauty or personal care i had no intention of building a business i i'm an artist as well i was selling my works nationally internationally mm. back then doing really well can i ask you a question yeah who are your favorite artists my favorite they say that kind of art you like tells you a lot about a person is it so my favorite artist is seema kohli mm. followed by paresh mehti both of these are indian artists i know i've met them i've mm. i've seen their work i've taken a lot of inspiration tell me some international them. dead ones i love van gogh and i love picasso which painting if you say picasso do you like his red face his blue face do you like cubism i like cubism the most Why? you will also see it a bit of it in my work why um there is so much depth hmm. to I that think, painting i think cubism was not him originally cezanne started it he got inspired right i think it was the first time when some artist did not depict something as it is but Original. took a derivative of it and that appealed to but him but my favorite works of picasso have been on the lines of cubism hmm. i just feel that when you put those lines to form certain shapes um and i don't know how true that is but there is so much interpretation or there is so much depth to it that you can pull out um every time i look at these paintings i feel a different emotion mm. and it goes back to how i am feeling at that point of time when i'm looking at the painting mm. uh, i i just and that's something that i wish i'm able to bring out through my work and how was, how long after college did mama art start just out of curiosity So I spent uh, almost three and a half years with NIT. Then I was an artist for two and a half years, mm-hmm. and uh, after that, two years I was working in India. And after that, Mama Earth happened. So almost, uh, almost seven years. Not long. Seven, seven and a half mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. 
uh, when I had my son is when Mama Earth happened. So really? Which, so which yeah. year did you start, Mama? So Mama Earth started because of you my son, when yeah. I became a Mama. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> is that why you called it Mama Earth? Uh, the Mama word did come from there, but there were a lot of other reasons as well. Right. Now the Mama Earth story has been told already. Yes. So I don't. I won't go into yeah, that yeah, too yeah. much. But uh, NIIT, then what did you say? Yeah, so studied at NIIT. While studying at NIIT, took up my first job with NIIT, mm -hmm. which was a corporate trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, no experience, just mm -hmm. because height was good, I had a suit for my mom, went, gave an interview, got cleared. Next day, they asked us to give whatever documents we had because they had to finalize it, is when they realized that I don't... My age is not eligible, I don't have any prior experience and I'm a student of NIIT, so I can't take the role up. Mm. Convinced them in some way that, give me one, if it doesn't work out, I won't charge for it. Like, I was doing it for money, right? There was no other reason. Um, uh, but they were kind enough to give me that one opportunity. Mm. Learned on the job, had no idea how to train people. Like, this was a training that I was taking for... Um, people who were in their 40s to 50, 50 years of age bracket who had been working with their company for almost, you know, 10 to 15 years. And I was the one who was taking a software that NIIT had built to them saying, I will teach you how you can do your work better. Hmm. That was also the first time I experienced that confidence can be faked. Hmm. <laughs> because I was, I, I had, my legs were shivering when I entered that room. I was a student and I was supposed to become their teacher. Hmm. And tell them, how can you use this software that I had also learned just seven, ten days back. Hmm. And sort of, you know, it's learning on the job. Hmm. But This I is the managed. number one competency in entrepreneurship that you have to be confident no matter what. But Really, you have no idea what's going to happen next. <laughs> I know. But again, I think on the flip side, uh, I always think, what can go wrong? Worst case, I'll be thrown out of it. I, any which ways don't have it. So like, I will eventually, like once I, I complete the course, that, yeah. yeah, so that's okay. The downside was so low. Like, mm. the risk of failing mm. was so low that then you confidently go and you pitch it and you take those trainings. How Which, did you come up? Like, I know there's an onion oil yeah. which has played a big part in this, yes. this story. I want to know a bit more about that. How did you go from NIIT to being an artist? I'm guessing you sold a reasonable amount of art, did fairly well. Yeah. How did, what kind of art did you make? So I'm also into semi-abstraction, okay. inspired by these guys. Okay, so you were doing decently as an artist. You were married by this time? Yeah, yeah. So... Uske beech mein bhi kaafi sari journey hai. So NIIT did that. Mm. Eventually ended up taking that as my main job. Did that about for, for about three and a half years. Met Varun. We got married. Where do you meet him? Arranged marriage. His bua used to be my neighbor in mm. Chandigarh. She's the one who arranged it between us. Of course, Varun and I were chatting on social media before that because he used to come visit bua often. Uh, but we were like, yes, this is an arranged marriage. The way mm. you're saying, got married. Mm. First uh, I, boyfriend? No, I I had a couple okay. of boyfriends before mm. that. <laughs> First husband. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, um, met Varun. Yeah. The first question that he asked me when we met, right? Not exactly the first question, but during that first conversation was, what is the, it that you want to do? Mm. And of course, you say a lot of things, etc., etc. My mother had prepared me. What did Varun do when you guys got married? Varun was working with HUL. Okay. As, FMCG. Yeah, FMCG. Varun has a pure mm. FMCG experience. Mm. He was working with HUL, very mm. good job. Mm. Uh, we got married mm. within five months of meeting each other. Mm. I moved to Delhi. Uh, mm. And within two months of marriage, uh, Varun had to move to Philippines for his job. And because we were in this new relationship, still trying to figure each other out and the relationship out and you don't want to be... I, I took a call that I will leave my job and I'll move to Philippines with him. Hmm. So when I moved to Philippines is where I had a lot of ample time. I picked up this passion for painting. Hmm. Uh, I think one day I just pulled out some paints and canvases and I painted and I didn't realize I was painting the entire night. Hmm. Till morning about 6.30, 7. Mm. And by the time Varun woke up, I had like four or five works ready to be hung on the wall. 
and he was super surprised so without telling me he actually submitted my works to a couple of colleges internationally mm. because earlier he had asked you know what's your passion i said painting mm. is my passion whenever i get time i'll pick it up he had asked that would you he like he didn't know it's that serious yeah he was very surprised so he asked me that question back then when we were getting married right that if given a chance would you want to pursue it professionally and i had said yes so yeah without telling me sent the works to the academy couple of colleges i got a call from new york academy of arts to come there and pursue wow. uh, artist with them mm. uh, you know the the course with them it was a 9 month uh, course and what year this was right, right into our marriage we got married in 2011 so this was 2012 mm. uh we'd spent about 6 months in philippines while i was doing all of this mm. Um, so 2011 2012 is when this happened and um, before even when the call came he did not tell me the call has come he figured out that if i have to go to that place where do i stay how do i manage because he knew that this girl has never been out of chandigarh let alone going to new york and pursuing this mm. he figured all the mm. nitty gritties out kahan rahegi kaun se dost hai mm. how will she manage etc etc mm. and uh, when everything was sorted That's when he said that if I tell you you can go to New York Academy of Arts would you go? I said of course I would love to go with an assumption that he'll go with me. Um he said uh, that that's when he said that a call has come uh, but you'll have to go alone. Uh because he was also new into his uh, journey of uh, you know handling Southeast Asia markets but um I said no and then he convinced me to take the risk go there alone the figure it out marriage. yes good husband yes huh? touch wood mm. i'm blessed you guys <laughs> <laughs> over to you us over to us <laughs> <laughs> we have to make sure yeah, that our yeah. we sound good for our wives <laughs> <laughs> yeah so when there then uh, first year olds but gone <laughs> no no i really wish that geet also says the same things about me but <laughs> I have no idea. Will I'll only find out. But please go on. But please like you would know, you, you would be putting things together, yeah, together no, but, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. But look, we we've dated each other now for what eleven years. So ever since high school. So there's probably a longer context. But yeah. we'll come to it later. <laughs> yeah, so did that. Really enjoyed my time there. <laughs> um, went for a very different course, which was realism, where you paint mm-hmm. photo-like real mm-hmm. pictures. old school impressionist stuff yes hmm. and hated it still life was learning that i signed up for that course i got invited for and i hated it uh and then i i still remember like one of these side opportunities came in which was a call for artists and you can submit your artworks and i created something that i felt like in in i think 3 hours and i submitted that work and it got selected to be exhibited at new york academy of arts it was up in their gallery until about 2 years back that is what gave me confidence mm. that again it's not about what you know or what you are learning something entirely different caught the attention of my teachers mm. and it got selected so mm. then that's where i started my journey around painting came back to india started exhibiting works started getting sold was doing really well i thought that was something that i wanted to do for the rest of my life how how mama earth i'm still wondering yeah mm. so mama earth happened after this while i was an artist we went on a family route i was expecting august there happened um what year this is 2014 okay and uh, first 6 months were okay you're still figuring out right we mm. used to have a lot of like our doctor used to call us google parents because we were googling each and everything around baby you're so worried as a new parent that you would end up breaking the baby mm. uh, that uh, i mean we were like hell lot of paranoid mm. set of parents not mm. just me set mm. of parents our japa made which helps you with the mm-hmm. baby for the first the 3 months you could see it. left in 15 days she said you guys don't let me do anything why have you signed me up she left she in 15 days she told the child like this <laughs> and you have to see it when she does this and you can't do that right so we were we and didn't like, allow her to feed the baby we didn't allow her to sleep with the baby we didn't allow her to bathe the baby so everything the baby. we were doing ourselves so she left mm. and a doctor also was saying the same things mm. google parents etc i think it was after that where um Agastya started having some skin reactions because of which I realized that the products that we were using on on him were not good enough. Mm. We started ordering from outside of India, and those products were suiting him really well. Mm. So that is how, um, you know, 
एज अ क्रिबिंग वाइफ आई वेंट टू बारून वाई इज वाई इन इंडिया में कोई कुछ कर क्यों नहीं रहा है वाई डोंट वी हैव रेगुलेशन लाइक वी डिड नॉट हैव एनी रेगुलेशन वी आर ऑर्डरिंग फ्रॉम आउटसाइड सो देयर इज दिस ब्रांड कॉल्ड बेबी गानिक्स ओके एंड देयर इज दिस ब्रांड कॉल्ड ऑनेस्ट या दैट इज जेसिका एल्बा यस जेसिका एल्बा आई वाज ऑर्डरिंग प्रोडक्ट्स फ्रॉम दीस टू ब्रांड्स एंड होल्डिंग इट लाइक क्रेजी इन कबर्ड फुल ऑफ कबर्ड दे वर ऑल लाइक ऑर्गेनिक नेचुरल ऑर्गेनिक वेरी लो यू नो फूड ग्रेड प्रिजर्वेटिव्स एटसेट्रा एंड वी डिड नॉट हैव एनीथिंग लाइक दैट इन इंडिया इंडिया वाज even the products that were calling themselves even out the as Johnson's ayurveda the ones, whatever was existing that was my i shouldn't that was my trigger to? that was my trigger because whenever anybody has a new baby maximum number of gift sets come from the brand that you said right johnsons and, and johnsons i'll say hmm. yeah my first achievement Foreign was brand getting a kitni bura hai karo acha hai it's not indian brand yeah. no so see more <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so that was my trigger, yeah. right? That was I was like, this is just not acceptable outside of India, and because I had lived in New York, I knew. Back in New York, there was this whole movement around J and J going on, where their talc had some cancer-causing ingredients in them, and they were being taken off the shelves. So I knew that there's something off with the brand because I used to use that mm. talc back then. Mm. And when I came to India, mm. and I was getting all of those gift sets, mm. and then internationally those controversies are happening and india also started getting those mm. cases mm. is when it it was it was like a very strong trigger mm. that mm. how can this come did, close to any of it, our babies is there regulation now which makes it harder for stuff like that to come in i don't think there's any regulation per se but that's what we solved for like Lobby, through Lobby mama Lobby in india Lobby? i don't think there is there is so for example ayush would have brought in certain rules um on the ingredient usage etc and mm. how do they certify products mm. to be uh, ayush certified but back then there wasn't so you you figured india mein aise product nahi hai banana hai so what is the how do you go from there to making a product yeah so like like a very brief conversation between me and varun mm. where i'm saying ordering products is so crazy you're, you're like tracking friends and family hmm. who's going where kya kar rahe ho ye packet le aana fir wo packet transit mein lost ho gum jata hai right it was so much pain and i just went as a cribbing wife i said why this problem needs to be solved india mein koi kyun nahi kar raha hai aisa kuch and he just made one statement he said if nobody else is doing it why don't you give it a try hmm. and that statement stuck i think all through my life i i'm just realizing now that there have been certain statements which have been like hmm. uh life changing for me mm. and this was one of those statements where he mm. said figure it out can it be done or not mm. the it might be a possibility ki india mein ho hi nahi sakta ingredients are only available outside and hence it's not happening so i got like a lever to i put like i wore that research hat and mm. i went mad around figuring out what's happening in the baby care industry in personal can care can someone do this if i were india. a 20 year old girl yeah and i want to start like a organic indian maybe ayurveda inspired something like that brand can i create a oil or a shampoo or a soap or something like that absolutely yeah. and it's not even difficult Give and it tips. doesn't have to be very expensive hmm. i think all you need to do is so for example what is the kind of product that i'm trying to create what are the kind of ingredients that i want the product to have hmm. Where are those ingredients available, and at what cost? Tell and me, I want. I'm a 21 year old girl. Yeah. I want to start a shampoo, which is very good for me. Yeah. Don't laugh at me being a 21 year old girl. Where do I go about finding out? I'm laughing at him. What goes into a shampoo? <laughs> what goes into a shampoo? Yeah. How do I get those ingredients, and how do I put them together? You have to have a product that you believe in. that this is something truly differentiated and is not available in the market or is providing convenience or is extremely superior but how I do i do that of, shampoo mein banana chahta hu how do i make it okay so what we if i am a 21 year old one you google formulation of shampoo very easily available what are the ingredients that go into it you google i want to make a shampoo at home bahut aasani se wo aapko bata deta hai you understand that okay there is a surfactant system which causes foaming these are the mm. ingredients this is what i want to put the difficult part is to understand <laughs> what are the ingredients that you want to replace it with mm. and how do you go about creating those formulations 
that is where google might not be able to help you as much if you don't know what do you want to replace it with mm. so my journey on creating that product and that was a baby shampoo back then started by reading the labels of these brands that i was sourcing from us mm. um that's and that's a good hack right if there's something nice out there absolutely which is expensive if you have a reference point you why can make not it for cheap. yes and study the in and out of that mm. product and you try to say you make that assessment and make your own derived formula like a no 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 uh, no no for the for the moment like this could be swapped in so now you go to an expert to get that validation that's of course there but you could do yeah. all this within yourself in the same no, i just did frame. paperwork i was just on the paper studying and trying to understand what is it that i want to build what is it what should a shampoo have which will make it milder yet effective and be very different from what's available in india which was more Harmful ingredients outside of India. Those ingredients were banned in a few countries to be used on a baby's skin, which were being widely used in India, right? So one, for example, studying. I just studied U.S. regulation because that's where the products were being lifted off. On How what are the ingredients? How do you study U.S. regulation? Where do you find it? Online, Google, free. Absolutely freely mm. available. Mm. Freely available. You study. You can study U.S. You can study Europe. I did all of that. Google was my best friend. Mm. and studying these products for example going to an honest company's website and seeing what are the ingredients that they are putting in their product mm. what is the with... source you take the name of that ingredient you put it on google it tells you what that ingredient does why is it used for what is the ideal percentage etc etc so the only thing that i understood out of all of that study was the fact that one coconut based cleansers exist which can make the shampoo far more milder and non irritant in nature beat for the eyes beat for the skin and i wanted to replace the harsh surfactant systems which were banned in countries outside of india but were being used in the baby products here with the coconut based surfactants and then after that i had to reach out to people who could help me build formulations and when you're starting out how do you find these people yeah so like again cold calling cold mm. mailing So you can and find if I go on Google and say I I'm a 21 year old girl. Yeah. I think my shampoo is horrible. Yeah. I find a shampoo a really expensive honest company shampoo which I really like. Yeah. I look at the difference in ingredients of that and what is available here. Yes. And then I need to find people who will make this for me. Yeah. Who do I call? What do I Google? So here is where LinkedIn helped. Hmm. because on linkedin you can specifically put search people out who are into research and development for personal care products hmm interesting right hmm. so that's where linkedin came handy hmm. and we uh, of course we like pulled out at least at least 30 35 40 people that we wanted to reach out to we sent we figured their email ids from linkedin itself i sent cold mails to these people hmm. probably out of those 35 three reverted Mm. and one and out of just, them and what timeline months or no 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 the, the, i think that ways our system is good even today if you write a cold email to somebody i think you most mostly okay. get a reply um and might be, be different now because the definition of entrepreneurship has changed it's but not back that easy then, in real estate yeah back then there was this again you know you have to find people who are able to understand what you're trying to say Mm. we were a set of parents trying to solve a problem that a lot of our friend parents were also facing how do you establish that connect mm. so we wrote a parent mm. couple trying to solve a problem mm. as the subject of the mail that we had sent out and i mm. think that really helped us be it finding the right manufacturing partner or finding this scientist couple Emotional who helped us for india. build uh formulation but that was also true right yeah, because i did not have it's a real story i couldn't say anything about myself apart from being just a mom uh so they reverted they um, helped us like put basic formulations together of course they did not have any manufacturing unit so we had to find another partner who could manufacture the product for us yeah. they are the ones who actually gave us access to their r&d lab because we did not have any and mm. that's the beauty of startup ecosystem in india right mm. the shared infrastructure that exists actually eases out building a business had it been 10 years back you would you would not even be able to think about something like this because 
If you had to build a formulation, you have to have your own lab and then have your own manufacturing unit. Otherwise, that shared ecosystem didn't exist. And they'll be okay to do five, ten pieces if I were to reach out. So they gave us access to their labs. Hmm. Labs me, you can have hand handmade batches, so not you can the commercial. Try. And you this can. is not expensive, like access to a lab. So nobody gives you access to their lab huh. or their resources. Huh. The only reason why we were able to get that was because we went crazy. Like he's still our largest manufacturing partner, by the way. Hmm. We went crazy following up and doable. requesting. As a twenty-one-year-old, yes. I can reach out yes. today and get access to a lab. Yes, I mean you have to have a vision and you have to be able to show that to vision to them? others. You want to the, name your them? biggest manufacturing partner? Yeah, yeah. So Capco, uh, Varun Kapoor, and Benita again a set of parents who had kids similar age as uh, us. Um, who they said that this is something that we had also been thinking about for the last couple of years. A lot of people have actually come to us, tried to figure this out, but nobody has been able to formulate or do something about it. So are you sure you want to put in time and effort? Because nobody has cracked it till now. But can um, you imagine that? I'm, but now I'm getting the point where he's going, and and since he started from your earlier journey, do you think today you have manufacturers or these lab uh, heads who are that welcoming to attend a call of a 20-year-old and says, "Okay, beta, आ जाओ, देखते हैं क्या करना है." Or they have somebody to be meet this so and so person. My See, Would they, ma, is there ma, a welcoming system in this segment of? Labs and absolutely. Recipes. You think it's I still mean, there? I mean, look at the number of startups that have come up in the beauty and personal care space in the last five years. I would say there will be more today than there were back then. Absolutely, yeah, that's for sure. Because there will be more labs. But there are labs. The young one calling up, you know. Mm. I don't know. Like young people call me all the time. I engage with so many of them. Not in. I don't have a lab, but in other domains. Especially yeah. uh, last three years. This has really changed because a lot of people have also experienced success, and they also understand that if you like the idea, you should pursue it with the person. I have come to terms with that. Right, first three years, I used to absolutely ignore whoever was writing such mail. कोई लिखता भी नहीं था मतलब ये nothing back then. Nobody used to write as well. But today, if If young people and I'll, I'll I'll tell you a small story. A 14-year-old who comes to me and says, "This is the Ayurveda brand that I want to create," and sits with me for a couple of hours, brainstorms, understands how to build a business, uh, and is working on it as we speak. So this is a real story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 14-year-old. 14-year-old. 14-year-old, and I yeah, was like super surprised at the kind of ideas that they have. have. Yes. They are so sure that they will be able to figure it out. Mm. It is beautiful. Okay, so you formulated it. You met the Capco guys who are your friends. I'm sure some people are going to hit them up after this. A lot of people have already hit them after. <laughs> <laughs> so you made a baby shampoo which worked better. Uh, we made four products. Mm. We made a baby lotion. We mm. made a baby shampoo. We made a hundred percent natural mosquito repellent, mm. and we made a sunscreen. Hmm. So these were the four products that we made. We were very clear, and each of them had a purpose. How much did it cost you to get to this point? Nothing. Hmm. This business, getting your prototypes. For example, what we were working towards was having five pieces of each, we, which we could show to people, let them experience it, sort of figure out and give us feedback. Hmm. Five, five pieces, made it. Handmade batch, made it. It's like working in your kitchen. It's like mm. beakers, and you're whipping it, and you mm. you made hand. Mm. It's not as fine as the commercial batch, but you know if the formula is okay, if the feel and texture is okay, the commercial batch will come out fine, right? Again, because we were digital first, we did not have the pressure of number of units that need to to be mm. created, right? Mm. Because we were not distributing it in one warehouse. You can produce as low as five thousand units of per product. And how 3, much does it cost to set product. up that warehouse? So it costed to set up so the, the warehouse. warehouse. No, again, we didn't own the warehouse. Shared ecosystem. You use people who have, uh, you know, Amazons and all of those of the world who have that infrastructure, so and no you cost? sign up with them. No cost. No fixed cost. So it depends on the amount of space that you sign up for, as you're using, and then it it starts from there. Hmm. For the first six months of our business, we did not have an office. Varun took one seat <laughs> up. I think you can transfer the question. <laughs> so she, this hot food. Uh, he knows that I ate before I came. Hmm. What year was this? Year. 
we started, we launched Mama Earth in December of 2016. Mm. So 2015, um, end of 2015 and early 2016 is when we were figuring it out. Mm. July is when we incorporated the company. Mm. We then worked with partners, finding the right kind of people who could actually make it for us. December, 5th December 2016 is when we launched it with mm. Amazon Launchpad. Mm. With uh, What is Amazon products. Launchpad? Amazon Launchpad, okay, so that was also the first year that Amazon had come up with this property called Launchpad, where they were helping startups or newer businesses get launched on their platform. It was separate from Amazon, so they were also trying to optimize, for example, these brands should come up in search or try to give them more visibility or get them, um, you know, visibility to the right kind of people within the ecosystem of Amazon, etc. So we launched with them. You, um, you would owe a lot of success to that that they created, according to you now? That was our starting point. So you made a few products. They worked. What happened next? You had a warehouse. All of this costed so next in to between nothing. also, hmm. how, how do you know the product worked or not worked hmm. was also something that was really important and like completely changed the way we pitched the brand to our consumers or we talked about it. Um, so we made those set of five products. Hmm. Um, because we were living in Delhi, we found a South Delhi ki ek really premium toy shop and we stood outside that toy shop because that guy did not let us in. We wanted to do some consumer work to understand if people… Wait, you went to a toy shop? Yeah. He didn't let you in? So you did it, sat, stood outside and did the survey? And anybody can do that? Anybody can do that. It, mm. it, it's basically a walkway outside the shops, right? Anybody can stand there. So we stood there, we knew our relevant consumer set is going to come and parents are the only ones who will come to a toy shop or probably one who's trying to take a gift for kids, but they will be exposed to that segment of kids, right? Mm. kids so we stood there mm. um, and coldly approached people who were walking in, mm. made them try our products mm. for feedback, gave them candies in return. Mm. <laughs> that was the only thing that we could afford back then. Mm. Um, and started filling our survey form for us to be able to take feedback. Because mm. when you're making natural products, Back then, we did not know that the performance can be at par with some of these other products. Now we know far better, but we also thought that performance might not be as good or the texture might not be as good. It's a handmade batch, etc. We wanted to take a lot of feedback on the way the product looked. We had created labels. So you were doing it with the packaging as well. Yeah, and we had created the labels and everything at home. Between Varun and I came up with the brand name. Those labels still continue. All our baby products are with the same label that we had designed back then. Uh, and you got this far with no money? Very we, little money? Yeah, so we had raised a friends and family round because mm. we thought we would need a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we did need money. So for example, the entire first 30 days, it was just me and Varun. Mm. When we launched ourselves on Amazon Launchpad and a few orders started coming in, we were the ones who were packing the orders ourselves as well for us to be able to dispatch it. Hmm. I still remember December is when we got this order of uh, 20 sets of four different products hmm. from Bombay. This mother wanted to give those products uh, as return uh, gifts on a birthday party. And we were like, Super happy, very excited, but so nervous. How will it make 20 products per product? <laughs> we were working with five per product. How would we make it? How would the production happen? Who will make it? How will it get reach them in time, etc., etc.? But figured, figured that piece out. Mm. Worked on crunch timelines and everything. Um, January. The first time you get that check for the first transaction is like is the most special. The first purchase, the first mm -hmm. consumer, the first bulk order. Isko hum bulk order bula yes. de we we yes. rocked it. It's the most special. It is. It was really special, and that's when that's what gave us confidence that we feel we need somebody in the team. I still for have us the first check framed at our office. The first check of like bulk booking <laughs> of ten room nights. So you pitched yeah. each vendor individually to get orders. And how do you find out <coughs> who the vendors should be for cosmetics or baby products? No, back then I didn't have an option. There was only one guy who said, yes, okay, I'll work with you. How did you find who to pitch to? So, okay, the way you find manufacturing, there are so many personal care products available in the market. Every personal care product has the manufacturer's address written on it, hmm. right? So you pick the up like the top 10. Of India. Yeah, hmm. you pick up top 10, you reach out to them 
for them to give you some time, for mm. you to be able to go to them and pitch. Nobody gave us time. These were the only people that we were able to get through. Mm. We had a conversation with them. Um, we loved the fact that they were parents themselves and that gave us a lot of confidence that they will put an extra effort to figure this out mm. with us, which they did. Mm. Uh, so they came in as a blessing to us. Um, so started working, all the products were being manufactured at the same place. As a consumer, it's actually the most misunderstood thing. Is it? Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest pain points that I'm facing today uh, is this perception that people have that if you're manufacturing, if you don't have your own manufacturing, the quality of the product can't be as good. Who oh, is it? Because yeah, you don't they, have control. They subcontract everything. Right? So technically they do, but it's not really. But isn't that the case with most large CPG companies? It's not manufactured by Mama Earth, right? It's, it's uh, sold and marketed by Mama Earth yeah. and then manufactured yeah. But isn't that true for Mama most Earth, large CPG companies? They also consumer ko kaun samjai? See, what I think… Consumers will say… For the longest… And this comes from history, right? For mm -hmm. the longest period of time, for example, HUL, etc. All of these larger partners have had their own manufacturing. For that matter, 10 years back, that was the only way to get into business. You can yeah. pr produce a product if you have a manufacturing unit. And that was the capex that was required to set it up, to get started. I'm so glad that that entire process got disrupted. And with very minimal capital, you can now use this shared infrastructure and start a business of your own. Otherwise, like 90% of the ideas would have still stayed an idea because you didn't have the money. Now, from the consumer side, because this comes to me a lot personally, that you don't have your own manufacturing and hence, aapke product ko to koi bhi bana lega. What they don't understand is manufacturing is different, R&D is different. Yeah, yeah. The IP is Developing yours. personal care, there's no IP. There's no IP. Right, because you are, you're disclosing 100% of the ingredients on the label. You put all the label, ingredients with right? the percentages. Yeah. So not with the percentages, but you're disclosing the name. When R&D is yours, which is and a product has so much to it. The, the sensorial, the texture, the efficacy, the feel, that just knowing the, knowing the ingredients, you might be able to come closer to the product, but you cannot crack exactly what the other person has cracked, right? Uh, or you reverse engineer, that's also a possibility. But a company can have it, her own R&D, her own expertise. We have our team members sitting at manufacturers, plant, you know, to, 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 for quality sure. checks, to ensure that everything that we have set out as a process is being followed. And what we are using is the capex that that person has invested into putting those machines and setting up that manufacturing unit. If I have to set it up today, it actually becomes a limitation for my business because I'll be limited with the space that I have, the number of machines that I can put, and hence innovation, which for the longest period of time has been super slow in India. Formulations get developed outside of India and then they are imported within India and then they are adjusted for India, which dilutes the performance of the product. That is something which Mama Earth challenged. That is something that we figured and we played on. And innovation is an edge now that everybody talks about and all of the larger players have also started talking about. Okay, it. coming back to it. So as a 21 year old, uh, what I have learned today, if I'm able to look at a great Korean brand. I know the formulation. I can hit people up on LinkedIn who will make it for me. I can find a lab which will be willing to do five to 10 pieces to try. If I convince them enough yeah. at a negligible cost, I don't really need to spend the money required to set up a manufacturing facility. Yes, I can use a co-packer and it'll just be, be just as good Probably better because if one guy is not doing good, I can com make him compete with another and get a better product. Now, I've gotten to the point where I can manufacture. How do I get distribution? How do I sell? What worked for Mama Earth there? So, when we were doing the consumer study, standing outside that toy shop, we realized we got a lot of feedback on how to communicate, what to communicate, what was, what were they understanding, what were they not understanding. So one of the examples, our pack said sulfate free. And this one mother came to us and said, sulfate free, kya free de rio? Hmm. So that was the understanding that the consumer had. And we realized that just communicating this free, that ingredients, this is free of these harmful ingredients is how we've got to put it. We can't say sulfate free, paraben free. Communication <laughs> got sorted from there. <laughs> what we also realized was that for a new brand, 
purchasing from directly from the website takes some time for them to have trust on the product or the brand hmm. and hence platforms which have which these guys already trust which were like amazon etc amazon flipkart etc it's better to list yourself there and be available there because the trust on the platform has an equity rub off on your brand that if this brand is available on the platform that i trust mm-hmm. yes i would want to give it a try what works in terms of like you said not sulfate free yeah. or paraben free yeah. but different things that was your hack what could be a hack in the ecosystem today 21 year old starting a cosmetic company what can i what can i use as a means of selling my product which would be differentiation today it depends on different propositions so for example mamoth was one brand we mm. now have six brands mm. and each brand has a very different communication and a very different proposition beauty and personal care in india is still evolving right mm. um there and people now have global aspirations mm. they know what's happening in a korea they know what's happening in a china and how the beauty system there is can evolving. i bring what's happening in korea to india and replicate it well and it's an opportunity right now you can bring what's happening in korea to india one way is you source the products from there and make it available in india mm. at affordable prices and you'll have to but figure out how to do it but people are already doing that well right yeah but it ends up being expensive second is you create your own brand on the proposition that's working But there you. because you've checked enough that even indian consumers really very strongly relate with it so i'll give you an example can we what? match korean quality here you can do better Nice I've done that with my third brand. Good to hear. I have a brand called Aquologica, which is a brand based on deep hydration for your skin. Korea skincare trend is deep hydration for your skin. They've been using multiple ingredients to figure those formulations out. We said, what can we do for India? See, the problem is for the longest period of time, beauty personal care industry me kisi ne India ke liye innovate hi nahi kiya tha. Mm. It was like. Varun says it beautifully ke angrez aaye the, apne saath thick creams leke aaye. Wo अंग्रेज तो चले गए थिक क्रीम्स रह गई राइट पीपल हैवेंट बीन एबल टू कम आउट ऑफ इट एंड से दैट इंडियन स्किन इज डिफरेंट इंडियन वेदर इज डिफरेंट एंड हेंस द प्रोडक्ट एफिकेसी और द प्रोडक्ट टेक्सचर एक्सेट्रा नीड्स टू बी डिफरेंट सो एक्वोलॉजिका इज दैट ब्रांड विच इज बेस्ड ऑन बेसिकली दिस कोरियन ट्रेंड अराउंड डीप हाइड्रेशन फॉर योर स्किन अ बेस्ट सेलिंग प्रोडक्ट देयर इज सनस्क्रीन इट हैज टेकन द मार्केट बाय स्टॉम It is the sunscreen, best-selling sunscreen, which is with hydration. Sunscreen with hydration, no what white cast. What is hydration, Gazal? Like okay. I know what a moisturizer okay. is, but yeah. how does it? Like I'm actually curious about a lot of what you're saying, and hence yeah. I'm like, what determines how much hydration you get from what cream? So one, like Amazon. if I'm paying a bomb, like if I'm paying one lakh rupees for a fancy cream, yeah. let's say La Mer or something. Yeah. and let's say i'm paying 200 rupees or 50 rupees for a cheap cream let me yeah. not name them yeah what is the difference so one the way your skin feels after 2 to 3 hours of application or even after 6 to 8 hours of application should one tell you the difference second we have figured so simple hack hmm. amazon has this instrument called moisture meter i think it's available anywhere between 3 to 400 bucks that's it right apply any cream test the moisture in your skin compare whatever creams you want to compare and it will tell you which cream is the most hydrating one like over the years i've realized that nothing should be left to gut based or subjective interpretation of things mm. if you put in and data points can buy this on amazon yes yes but what's the meter Why we should available? look for that it is correct so it has two uh, metrics moisture content and oil content oil content needs to be lesser moisture content needs to be higher the more moisturizing it is the more moisture content the more hydrating the product is if the oil content also ends up being higher you will feel stickiness on your skin and that's how you can judge the i won't get into distribution too much because we did a episode with kishore raj and anand and we did distribution for 2 hours how to sell on amazon how to be ranked higher in their algorithm growth hack stuff like that but incredible story uh some of the nuance i don't know like now will we resonate with it when you were 12 13 years old the split in your family built some kind of insecurity in you that many of the other things 
loyalty, financial freedom, early, slightly aggressive, slightly unforgiving, uh, forget but don't no, truly forgive. Forgiving but don't doesn't forget. Yeah. Forgive. Yeah. I've forgiven a lot of people in my life. Could you say that if you forgive and you don't forget, it's slightly unforgiving true? No. True so forgiveness So when you is, forgive, uh, you're putting yourself at ease. Uh, you're taking that burden or that pressure off your, otherwise it keeps moving in your mind that mm. you're still upset by certain things. Mm. So you've forgiven. Mm. It's no longer bothering you mm. and it's no longer bothering the other person. Mm. But would I trust that person again with the amount of trust that I had before? Would I trust that person again? Probably yes. Diminished but with my, share, with my fair share of doubts. Yeah. Uh, mom stepping up, big event. Yes. It, it's very evident how that has, uh, also when you said mom or dad favorite or who you would like to be like you said mom, I think it has defined your personality to a certain extent. Uh, when you got confident about how you look beyond the 12th grade, yeah. I think Ritesh came in between and added there, but being confident about anything, uh, how you are confident about how you look is a big part of being confident about anything. Yes. And I think to any young entrepreneur, it makes a big difference. Also, uh, creativity by virtue of being an artist, big part. Of, I'm drawing a guzzle word cloud. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I will compare word clouds because mm -hmm. you are anomalies, all three of you. Mm -hmm. One in 99 who have failed at building a successful startup. So I'll see what are the similarities and then we will try and figure out Thank if you. this is the right okay. answer to the question. What makes a startup successful? Creativity, again, I think extremely important in a world where everything has become so mechanized. Uh, differentiation comes from creativity. Uh, and this is a little bit of a digression, but how good your partner is. Yes. How you, how supportive the man or woman you choose to uh, cohabitate with or marry or have children with absolutely is a game changer. Absolutely. Would you yes. think this would have been your word cloud starting off? What is Guzzle the Entrepreneur? Very interesting. I'm also hearing this for the first time. I've it's never created a, <laughs> yeah, I've never created a word cloud around me. But um, I would truly say these are the words that have, I, I can't add anything more to it. These are the largest defining pillars of your yeah. professional success. Yes. yes. And not the typical hardworking generic bullshit that everybody gives. Right? Those are byproducts that everybody needs to have. Yeah, like over the time, I uh. also figured that ev everything is fig figure outable is the word that I use. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's nothing that you can't figure. If you, if you put in the right amount of effort, everything in the world is figure outable. It's, it doesn't matter. Mm. Like, You've learned it, you've done a course around it, you've, mm. you've picked this up or not. Mm. Uh, just be curious enough and that works really well. But thank you for being so vulnerable and honest about it. I think uh, in this pursuit of being more public, we all become so rehearsed with time that we become boring. And I think people are able to gauge that today. I'm so, sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, moving on. I think we'll come to Ritesh last because his story is most popular and has been told so many times. <laughs> so Manish is this rare, like, you know, we talk so much in the media about unicorns and all that, right? I don't know what animal is rarer than unicorns. I would call him like, I don't know, a dinosaur. Dinosaur. Or... I, I was going <laughs> to say dinosaur because <laughs> that yeah. one is rarer. Yeah. So you made my cloud already. Yeah. <laughs> So, the one word is enough. Yeah. <laughs> so I've seen Rare Rabbit. Uh, there's a store in the mall right next to my house uh, in UB City. And I've seen it like here and there many times in the past. So we were investing or we we're in the process of investing in Rare Rabbit. And when we started researching the company a bit more, it just didn't make sense. It was stupidly incredible. Like an Indian homegrown Western clothes manufacturer, a company built in the era that we live in, 
making a profit after tax with no investors. He, it's his house, so I'm hearing him. Fully he's, bootstrap. He's up, uplifting it too much. <laughs> with no investors, no dilution, nobody, and our man has built it. When I when and first you, generation, bro, you built it. Incredible. How many years ago? Seven years. Seven years ago. Just seven years ago. So we started Congratulations. together. We are also seven years. 16, 17. And nowhere to be found in the media. Yeah. No interviews. No like, if you, you, like, our team was trying to do like a bio of him. Yeah, someone so asked me, do you have a bio? Him. I said, he said he doesn't have Shadi a bio. Ke time bio, data bana tha. <laughs> Uske baad bio bana hi so then they started looking up online. No, uske baad bio bana, aapne banaya nahi. Aapne dala nahi. You didn't put words to it. I am from Bombay originally. Born and brought up in Bombay. Uh, lived in uh, a small uh, place called Kalba Devi, which is a very hustle bustle textile market. You can call it the Bada Bazaar of Calcutta or the the bazaars of Chandni Chok, Chandni Chok and Chickpate of Bangalore. So grew up there, uh, had a lot of challenges. Dad was a hardworking man, uh, separated from his brother and he was trying to make his big life. He, Dad separated from his brother? Brothers. Similar story. Yeah. Happy separation, sad. Mm. Sadi, separation. Separation, <laughs> never happened. Ah, we so brothers, how can they, it be? Happy? He moved out. Not that I could, I have no memory of how he did and all that. I was it's serendipity. You didn't pick it up like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, nahin, but I think uh, India may 95%, 98% normal. Hai hai. This is like, ho nahi hai. so we used to live there, uh, not had too much of access of great things from a color TV or whatever. Could go to neighbor's house to see movies. Uh, they would be on sofa, I would be on floor. But that was life. And uh, there are a couple of things that stung me that uh, when I moved from that place to Cuff Parade, which is the, let's say, the skyscraper part of Bombay. Because How old were you when your parents, your dad and brother separated? I would be what? Three, four, five years old. Hmm. Three, four, man. Hmm. I mean, not even the conscious of mind. Too to young Bombay? to understand. No, we were in Bombay always. Uh, Actually, that age, they say, between three to seven, eight, all psychology states that even though your memories might not be vivid, those are the most impactful. impactful yeah. Those are Probably. very formative. Yeah. My memories go and very those are the years when kids year grasp. Old. The most as like well. Like some things I remember for some but reason. But I'm not sure this kind of stuff. Would they be yeah, yeah. able to understand? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, know. you would not understand what happened, but now you can relate to it. You can understand the noises. You mm. can understand that you're packing a bag and leaving and just going somewhere. But yeah, it happens in everyone's life. But I think uh, we are sitting also here because today, from whatever success we've got, the message is also to those 20-year-olds that you may be in that same hustle, bustle, madness, wrongs and rights of life, but there's always an outcome, there's always a shine out. That's why you can hear us or believe us, or it can happen to any of you. So moved, uh, uh, it was tough. Uh, small things were difficult. I always had the eye for design, color especially. Uh, I, can, uh, I can pick color very fast. Some eyes are trained for that. My God gift is that. And uh, I used to love shoes like these in those days and it was not accessible. We'll put a picture of Ritesh's shoe on his way out, okay? Uh, on this podcast, you should. They're really cool. My, he's shying Thank my you. red oh. ones as well. Yeah. Uh, my, my red ones are shying actually. <laughs> so, for me, it was a lot of everything was less available and I had to do a lot too much in advance. Uh, I, I mean, everything in life, I've done it, I think almost six, seven years earlier five, six, seven earlier, from lighting us first cigarette to stealing children money from home, uh, stealing a car from the house, doing anything in life. And then one fine day when you're growing, you just say, uh, I, the other big influencer of my life is movies, uh, Indian and uh, Western movies. I think uh, people may realize or not realize, maybe some part you would realize that in movies, some some lady has also affected some personality there as well. Because Indian India is somewhat we are enveloped and surrounded with this, this culture of movie around Actually, us. Actually, I do. I do. And if you are now busy, that's a different thing. But it has a very big impact other yes. than parents, movie and the role play. As always. I think the way diamonds and cigarettes got sold by Hollywood is testament to yeah, yeah. 
how soft power is in the movies. <clears throat> Absolutely. Right? But let's hear it from your childhood. My childhood, of course, been uh, unlike your parents. Uh, my mother was very hard on me. I was uh, quite brutally handled because I was. I also never gave get better reasons in life to her for doing everything in life. And uh, so I was talking about movies because uh, with movies, for me there was nothing beyond Mithun Chakravarti and Amitabh Bachchan. There was nothing. There was one guy who could move, dance, and look glamour and gold. And this is this man who's got all this charisma of looking how dashing he was. And the first time when the jacket came with the, so we are talking about bomber jackets now. When Amitabh Bachchan got his first jacket to put his hands inside, we were like, "How do you put a hand here? You know, that's that's a big thing. There's a pocket here, and that was a big thing to have to ourselves that, were, that you could wear something that I can have a pocket here. So from dad's business would pick up some fabrics here and there, and uh, from his office steal some." Cans of kapda and go to the tailor, get it stitched, sit there and ऐसे काटो, ऐसे काटो. And while this was happening, uh, uh, education was nowhere. Uh, just trying to uh, kind of scrape through by 70% copying in exams and finding a way through. Just do this duty. And uh, finally, when 12th came, I was done with the struggle of copying. There's a lot. उसमें भी बहुत मेहनत है. प्लानिंग करना है चिट्स बनाने हैं किधर क्या है उसकी मैपिंग करनी है ऐसे छोड़े यार ये सब जस्ट टू का बैक एंड आई मॉम आई डोंट वांट टू स्टडी एंड ऑफ बिकमिंग अ बिजनेस मैन सो इन स्कूल पीपल यू कैरी बैग्स यू नो एंड आई वुड कैरी अ वी आई पी वी ऑफ माय डैड एंड ओपन माई बुक्स फ्रॉम दैट एंड पीपल वो लाफ इट मी बिकॉज आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू फील बिजनेस मैन यू नो बिजनेस मैन सूट लेके जाता है ऑफिस तो मुझे आई थिंक फिफ्थ स्टैंडर्ड आई कैरी द First time a VIP wow. suitcase. Like basically, wow. businessmen would carry cash in the suitcase, yeah. so that equivalent was you huh. carrying books. Yeah, and I wanted to carry. That was my bag. Also five years. Yeah, I did for five six years. I mean the class. <laughs> You're going yeah. in the cash direction. And. मैंने तो कभी नहीं देखा cash. मैंने दोनों नहीं देखा, but I. Finally, we have the cash. We have the cash. So, uh, <laughs> dad used to be. Uh, Tell us a bit more about your dad. My dad, uh, he's. Uh, He is a great businessman, a great hustler. He he could he is. There's one story I want to tell you from where it starts. Actually, my dad when he split from his brother and uh, it was over a simple issue that his brother wanted. My uncle wanted to make fifty uh, paise a meter. कपड़ा एक रुपए का होता था. He used to be in textile business. हाँ, uh, textile business and uh, he was the uh, monopolist. My uncle was a monopolist of few NTC mills of Bombay. For certain, so NTC mills would have. Uh, What Four, is NTC? Five, National Textile Corporation because everything was nationalized. Uh, there was what some, era are you talking about? We're talking about eighties, seventies, and eighties. Hmm. Uh, till nineties also there were mills, uh, NTC mills was. So he was a supplier to NTC. No, he was a buyer of the mills, uh, the it. fabrics, and they used to make ten twenty qualities. Each quality used to be handhold by certain cartel of businessmen. So my dad would have certain sorts, and my dad was very. He was a very quick rotator in business. and unlike his brother who was 15 years older to him who would want to make uh, more money but he would say if you're making 25 paise you know ek rupaye ka maal ek 25 mein bik raha hai bech de so on that tussle he says no you don't know business and he knows business better and things like that they split but he still went there to take that 20000 meters to the mill and and at that time um, he entered that office uh, so he was not an english speaking guy he would actually go and he didn't know what's excuse me ya uh, kaise ghusna hai he was just a straight man so he would enter the chairman's office where he would have two guards and no one can get out of so if mr sen when he would leave the textile mill who is mr the, sen mr sushil sen is also one of the reason uh, one of the the key man who made even kishor be on his life and he also was instrumental in making my dad's life uh from very very early days what did he do uh, uh mr he was a director and chairman of all the mills in bombay in the by 80s. the government in the yeah. 80s so when he would leave his house 42 mills air conditions used to go on that saab ke idhar bhi aa sakte hain mr powerful, sen left mr. us sen. and textile was the predominant large business of the yeah, 80s yeah. india yarn textile uh, and that's it
Reliance also started like that. Yeah, yeah. Reliance, Women. Bombay Dying. Bombay Dying, all. You name it and everyone. Pyramids. Bombay Wealth Creation effectively started. Pyramids are also from textile. textile. So, uh, Mr. Sushil Sen was like entering his chamber and he wanted to get crash in and he... Who wanted but to agree? My father, because mm -hmm. he said, he saw that I need this and he was fighting outside with the managers that uh, I want one I want this deal on my name. And which was not happening because they said, this is your brother's and why have you come? He heard all this nonsense. He said, come inside. I said, my brother doesn't know the deal. I want to take this. And uh, he says, and how will you pay? He says, that I don't know. And when will you pay? He says, after I sell and I recover. And I say, or uh, company is so old. He said, it's not made yet. So I said, and he was like, are you serious? This is almost like I was seen as through shul differently. but And uh, he just saw it in him. And that's how you get that. In those days, trust and eye contact and those things had a very different value than these 30 pages contracts today. Uh, so he was just like, okay. So, but in the contract, say something to Radha Kishan Murailal, that's my father and my name. So, and I'll just formulate the company and come back. And he did that and he never stopped. He was, uh, he was called the textile mafia. When I joined, I was 17 Who years old. Who was called the textile mafia? My dad. Yeah. Because he would really break in, uh, he was very, uh, he's a big, he was a big hustler in textile. He could break. There are many things he knew that his objectives are very clear that my objectives is first, the rest is less. So mm -hmm. he would like literally, know that the clothes will not be clean, it will not be clean, and I have to X quantity, I have to buy it, so make it 4,000. Or make it 4 places. Because if I get a little bit of all places, my contract is closed. My income is very important. So when I joined the business, everyone, he also became very popular with uh, even the Pyramal House, the biggest trader, foreign trips given to him and things like that. In the 80s. Uh, this was uh, late 80s. Hmm. Late 80s, he, he and my uncle thought, uh, my other uncle actually, they were still together, that let's start exporting fabrics to Bangladesh. Uh, export exporter banna bahut hai. You know, that uh, dollar income and 25 rupees ka dollar tha ya 26 ka and was bag liya, chale gaye. Pehli baar dollar dekha hai, pahunch gaye. <laughs> rikshah se 25 kilometer paddle rikshah se hotel tak gaye. Mm. Finally, rickshaw stand ke upar, aise hi upar ek naam dekh liya, Mohammadi group, ghus gaye. And what group? Mohammadi group. Why Mohammadi? Uh, Bangladesh is all Muslims, right? So everybody, the names are all... But one of the companies in Dhaka. Yeah, com companies in Dhaka. They just saw that group and they said, let's get into entry here. Bus could sample and pull the kaya and they took the first order. So they, so as a family, we just go, we are a, we are a family, we kind of respect and really bow down to those those people who have actually given us that first lift in life. So Sushil Sen, hai, fir Anisa, who, who, who would have become the the leader of the country today or a very important leader of the country. He left, I mean, he passed away uh, almost a decade back, maybe, plus minus. So that man, it never stopped. We he became away a decade ago? Uh, the founder of Mahmoudi Group, hmm. Mr. Anisa Lahak. Bangladeshi. Bangladeshi person. He's my mentor. Uh, because uh, in 96, when we had another split between my father and another brother, that's when uh, I had to pack a bag and I had to go out for business at the age of 18, 18, 19 years old. And uh, Where did you go to school and all in Bombay? Which school? I went to G.D. Somani and uh, followed by Jahin College, which uh, I didn't pursue. To and, study what? Uh, commerce. Marwadis have no other option. Hmm. And art sunte hi lagta tha ki. I did home science though in school, mm. cross stitching, cooking. I was the only guy in the in the girl segment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so took, uh, when the other split happened, uh, I, I I had to take over the business of dads, and uh, I had already started working at the age of 16, 17 with dad in the mills. Uh, all the mills, I would design textile, create my own color boards. And I was the first one to actually create mood boards, mm. which today in your business would be themes or the whole yeah. campaign board around yeah. and things like that. I used to make those into these uh, people who carry bags of swatches and hangers and I would carry boards, unreal for even factories. And uh, self for Bangladesh, 
not to even how old were you at this time 17 18 hmm. and not so when to, was the first paycheck you got on your own like a marwadi family did you get paid by your family for no, a no, bit no, no, and no. then i so there's a very uh, different and i hope the generation especially i don't know wherever it's relevant nowadays kids think you know ki dad has put me to education and uh, one day i will pay back my dad for whatever he spent on my education and i tell my kids i said don't make it too cheap and shallow here you start from the birth from the cereal that you ate i had even compounding but byaj of marwadis all the holidays and if you can also com- firstly calculate all that so don't take this short four year payout <laughs> and <laughs> that was a good thing i said yeah, i initially <laughs> thought that you said you meant to say that don't be so shallow it's you don't need to do it and yeah. then you reversed it and said baba that starts all the way no i said no you do all this because That's what's cute. this 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 fad because i have boys right and all of them are young and my friends have kids and they all have this one paycheck to the parent in the end like you know one exit clause ke bhaiya बाप को इतना दे देंगे ना उसने चार करोड़ अगर स्पेंड किया तो मैं वो देके निकल लूंगा मतलब मेरा एक ऋण चुका मूल रिटर्न कर दिया मतलब मैंने क्या कर दिया ऐसे लुक आई हैव एम्प्लॉयड पीपल आई हैव क्रिएटेड अ सिस्टम एंड इकोसिस्टम यू आर बोर्न इन दिस फैमिली नॉट टू गिव मी माय 4 सीआर बैक एंड व्हाट डू आई डू विद दैट मनी यू ओ मच मोर नो एंड व्हाट डू आई डू एंड देन डिड यू स्टडी जस्ट फॉर दैट यू ट्राई टू कमिट मी दैट यू विल ऐड मोर वैल्यू यू विल डू दिस यू विल डू दैट आई वांट टू ड्रीम दिस आई वांट टू That's what you're supposed to do. Eventually, would you want your? Sir, udhari thodi na thay hai. Would they work at Red Rabbit eventually? Ah, uh, I don't know this. I so Hope. I work. I think very differently. My wife and I think very differently. They have their own life. They can do what they want. Uh, there is no ready seat at all. Hmm. They'll never get that readily. Uh, Why not? Because uh, it's a business which has its own uh, dynamics. It has its own plus minus. Two plus two is never five. Four. it sometimes is 5 sometimes it's minus for whatever reason because nothing works and you have to learn the 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 subsidy khel you know you go up to 99 and suddenly like that last snake brings you down and you don't come up straight to 100 because bab dials dial roll kar raha hai can i ask you a question nurture versus nature who is our kids predisposed to do well at a certain business is there a, is there such a thing as talent inherent talent in people or is it upbringing evolution experience which defines who does well i think a small part of but it's a very small part to according to me that they they have it in them uh, for whatever dna reason is just to be that you can have your uh, somewhat a bit uh, values of the family right that's it baki i think kids only see and become and behave Uh, only from whatever they see around their home uh dad's working hard he's coming late he's 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 not he still got a smile on him and all of that so that upbringing the upbringing is not the upbringing you know holidays and take them out do some trampoline jumping and was that the case with your father he worked hard came home with a smile or no uh i never got to see my dad for the longest time he would come and i would be sleeping and uh, Sunday was the only time, and I would watch with him back to back four or five black and white movies. For me, when I was in textile, uh, I used to. I was very fortunate. Then, uh, at the age of ninety eight, I was barely twenty twenty one, and uh, Dalmia Ji of Century Mills, which is owned by Mr. B K Babu, B K Birla. Wait, what happened between eighteen to twenty one? That's where I am. Hmm. Uh, I got a chance to. Uh, so at eighteen, you split your brother, your father, and. the other uncle who had yeah. not split split hmm. you left and started what no no uh, it was my dad who split with my uncle and okay. i helped in that and that's why i was arbitra- I, i was an arbitrator actually at hmm. that time i was doing the my dad didn't want to he didn't understand what was going on and what's with the books and all of that and i had to dig in a lot so learned a lot actually from that i have no regrets with that and i am uh, super super close to my family yet again and uh, so we when we when we split i had to start all over again took up bangladesh export business and uh, what came my way because i got a little popular with the textile mills of morarji mills of piramals why uh, because i used to be forever in their uh, 60 degree furnace mm. uh, areas and mm. inspecting fabrics and mm. boiler rooms and uh, no lunch i mm. got hospitalized for acidic attack 
Mm. No water intake. That's my biggest habit. Wrong habit even today. Mm. Water is missing in my body. When you talk about hydrants, <laughs> <laughs> water itself has Contrasting. been. Uh, it's been. It's 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 the the only bad habit I have. I can't sip water mm. even now. I don't feel the urge of it. But anyways, uh, moving from there got popularized and somehow. Dalmeer ji and Mr. Panwar ji in those days. Was he, this with your dad or outside? With my dad. Also. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's why I said I got my kids along because mm. when you said, "Is it your money and you separate it or what is it?" I said, "Dad had got this amount of uh, uh, three and a half four crores." And, big money uh, back then. Yeah, ninety nine. Mm. Uh, I would not say big. I think it was good money. Mm. It's not the bigs of today. Is like how you would imagine big is what, and. Uh, बट या उसमें बहन की शादी करनी है मारवाड़ी का एजेंडा वही है उसमें दो तीन लग जाता है सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ तो इफ यू पुट दैट मनी इन दैट फ्रेम देन यू रियलाइज कि यू आर ऑलरेडी वन ओनली लेफ्ट कि वो तीन तो बेटी का है तो बच्चा तो एक ही है एंड देन वी फाइनली सेड ओके लेट मी डू दिस मिस्टर दालमिया ऑफ सेंचुरी मिल्स डेनम दे पुट अ प्लांट इन सतराती इंदौर एंड दे सॉ दैट they put the big large mill and they didn't know how to make more than 69 qualities there and i i could weave and construct and so many other textures and weaves and i could take it to almost 450 mm. uh, 465 sort numbers they were sort numbers created like that they were each quality batches and i would take about 30 25 35% of the production mm. to bangladesh and sell it at a at a margin Uh, is that how Bangladesh's textile industry started? So Bangladesh is a very it's a jute country, and uh, so why it, would why would why did they have need or demand for the textile you were taking from India to so them? So in 1986, there is which is called the father of the nation, Mr. Nurul Kader. He actually took 16 men at his expense. It's a very poor country mm -hmm. was back then, mm -hmm. though it was terrible. Now it's booming. That. those numbers are the per free. capita income of bangladesh is probably the highest in south asia at least in textiles they've killed it right yeah yeah but uh, biggest employer in bangladesh the textile largest industry. largest in the world and uh, as a country and i think 56 or 60% almost the gdp the economy is on garments to export manufacture garments they employ the largest human force in uh, in uh, manufacturing in one industry alone so This gentleman Nurul Kader in back in those days took 16 men and uh, took them to Korea on his expense to understand how to do line manufacturing system, not do one piece. He you was make the yourself. prime minister of. No, uh, he was just a businessman, mm. uh, but a very renowned person. Those 16 people from Korea, when they trained and came back, it's like how the Toyota car manufacturing is: parts mm. come from all sides, and you're just mm. assembling it. Uh. So that's the mechanism of production, uh. which. Uh, he adapted to on his expense he put up a large factory huh. and in 89 uh, the entire factory was under water of 3/4 mm. so everyone had to leave mm. he just took a promissory note in those days that you all will stick to garments so those 16 people became 5900 factories plus minus today in dhaka and i think dhaka itself is the highest then it is chittagong it's huge i mean they do the best of uh, garment manufacturing globally today um, so we i did very good business out of bangladesh of textile export uh, continuing whatever dad started in 88 and from the age of 18 to to almost 23 24 i got married at 24 and uh, i was also doing south african textile export business and that's when i realized that's a smaller country i could ask or convince the brands like uh, camel the cigarettes brand they had a manufacturing they billabong and all of them that if i could manufacture garments and send you so took the initial orders of 6 800 pieces back in those days and uh, was doing well so what happened in 2005 uh, sorry yeah 2004 5 uh, i just Was in Europe and I realized this brand called Zara. And I was looking at the store and wow. How old were you then? Twenty-four, twenty-five. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, "Looks good." Looked at some shirts and I said, "It's possible I can make it." And everything was seeing made in Spain, made in Spain. So I thought, "First Spain guy brand will be." Gara I, Apple Cola. I mean, music, uh, the, the desktop 
googled inditex and made a phone call and uh, i want to speak to the shirt buyer and he said yes so there's one thing which uh, that's why i asked you about uh, manufacturers are they welcoming here to just say ha huh. so we have this policy which is there in my life in my company which i got it from inditex so inditex uh, cannot refuse an appointment you can call right now i'll give you the number you can just call up and i said i'm uh, nikhil kamath and i'm a manufacturer of t-shirts i make sleepwear mm. even today they can't refuse no it's it's monitored uh, it's a very simple logic you're sitting here in a village it's a village la coruña a uh, northwest south of spain nobody goes there the flights operate for that company mm. from madrid and barcelona and uh, because mr ortega doesn't leave and he's a fine man lives in a small house till doesn't move from that house 18 1600 square feet ghar hai jab se hai tab se hai wohi ghar hai married there uh, so you are telling me if i am 21 boy making t-shirts and i want to sell to zara if i call inditex today they have to give me an appointment they will tell you yes you can come in now it may take you four more calls hmm uh but the operator system there is that they don't ask who you are mm. they just ask for a sleepwear buyer mm. they just push the call and everybody in their office has their office phone in their pocket mm. it's a desk phone but it's in their pocket clip and you can't leave it you have to have it with you by chance you've left it you're announced on the voice in the entire office which is almost 2 million square feet of office that and it's a very very slow decibel sound huh? mr mr perbora call for you extension all he has to do is go to the next phone anywhere on the wall and pick it wow. while he's talking to me in a meeting room and they have 200 meeting rooms uh, each table is as big as this and 600 square feet each room 200 meeting rooms and you have korea china but tell me what are the odds if i like i'm making t-shirt this is my t-shirt I call Zara and say, "Will you buy my T-shirt?" What are the odds of them buying it? So, if I look at this particular T-shirt, because you've written the word Bangalore boy, and if the designer there or the chief designer there or someone just catches an eye and a story behind it, that I'm taking a city, which they'll not take a city. Mm. Uh, no, sorry, they will take it. They'll not take uh, scripts of different language because it could mean an abuse there, here, and all that. So, if they can build city, Tokyo, New York, Bangalore, if they create a table of T-shirts. if that's the theme they would have they would place an order to you uh, back in those days even now now they will just maximum tell you is that we like your product everything is good can we keep it or please can you contact our uh, delhi office for compliance just to check that you are fine in those days i worked for 12 years exclusively for them i designed collections for them i was the only men's manufacturer for them for uh, zara man and uh, When you say you were the only men's manufacturer, you're talking about all of them. I'm design. designing, so it used. I used to sell my own design. I'm not a factory who would uh, who would manufacture given designs, mm. uh, which most of the exporters do in India. So Zara gives them a design and says, "Make this for us." Yeah, that's it. You would design and take it to Zara and say, "Show a collection, sell the collection, and uh, and get my hit ratio there." So of course, coming back, it's still about that marble, no? And uh, you, I always did business for only profit. Mm. I never understood business which had no margin. Mm. Like similar what your dad said that PNL नहीं है तो घर कुछ नहीं आएगा. And मुझे वो gestation period वाला आमना वाला valuation वाला दिखाने वाला कैसे होता है? I don't know because I only knew two plus two has to be four or two plus two make me my six because I need that balance too. Mm. So I didn't know any other formula. and uh, that similar thing happened with red rabbit as well when my dad came once to see the collection and he said this boy is getting frustrated doing exports mm. so in that whole process of my life because Wait, 25 you went to zara 12 years you made t-shirts for zara you were 37 by then yeah and then what happened and became the largest for the kids wear mm. started mango what is the scale of this how much money did you make from zara at that point I'll tell you about my first money. Then mm. what you're talking about? My first money was Bangladesh, uh, which was uh, on calculation it was about twenty five lakhs, and uh, I I placed the order in. I got an order from Bangladesh. You're talking I, about one order. One order. Mm. And when I took that order, I had to go to Salem to place it. 
and uh, I stayed back in Salem because I found that I could not, I should not buy from traders in Bombay. And when I went to Salem, I could find it at least 15, 10 rupees cheaper because he was keeping that margin. So I stayed back there and I opened an office there in Uri. I did come back to Bombay. And uh, a lot of mosquitoes. So I would sleep with a wet towel on me because the, the building that I bought now, rent has started, so I thought, how do you pay money in the hotel? It's not going to happen. But it was a bad choice today, if you ask me. <laughs> because I didn't know what sound I was sleeping with mosquitoes of what size. And it was bad. And uh, so that my first real income was 25 lakhs. And to that same customer within three months, I paid 50 lakhs as claim. Because that quality which was shipped from there was not of good standard. And I was crying uh, from the hotel there. And I called up dad. Uh, that, uh, and the only thing he explained me was that, Tum school gaya na? Bala, haan, gaya My dad never knew which class I am in all his life. Uh, and I said, haan, gaya Saying, school mein fees bharte ho? Bala, haan. To dande ka fees yehi hai. Claim bharo. So he will learn, he will learn a little bit. You took the order, you took the place, you opened the office too, and you didn't see the light, it's closed. You go and stay now, you are seeing that the light is not good. I'm sure frustration will not happen, you will send 4 messages to me. What's up? Team go. It's impossible. An entrepreneur who has created his product, he doesn't have to be happy. I go to my office and they have this internal… Messages with pictures. Yeah, yeah. You know, the journey of the WhatsApp is that, so in fact, message, talking about message with pictures, so I had to do learn styling. I was not a designer, officially. I stole 5,000 rupees from my mother's cupboard. I applied to some lady in Burley Seafair who could get me brochures of colleges to go abroad. I mujhe hi jana tha abroad. Mother, no one asked. Digressing, did you steal money from your mother's cupboard? Yes. Agarwal, Ritesh. Yeah, Agarwal, Ritesh. Agarwal. You were a very good child, yeah? Huh? Nahin kya? I'm talking only, like 50 rupees. I was three, so, I was three years old when I first stole 25 mm. paise. Cousin? I have. I have. But mom se pitai hoti thi. Number kam aay toh, uski pitai hoti thi. Our number was very scared. I mean, my mom se toh itna darte thai ki dur se dekhe toh mala pranam. We'll come into that. Why we three have and you haven't. It's an interesting question. Continue. Doodh ke dhule kaise hoya? Nahi, wo doodh ke dhule kaise hoya? Bhala, aapki saadi se safed kaise hoya? Us baare baat karna chahiye. Fair enough. So, after that, uh, this 10, uh, where was I? Uh, 25 lakhs Bangladesh, 50 lakhs claim, dad yeah, said Yeah, claim fee. and uh, they never looked, I never did that mistake again and mm. uh, made sure everything was in, was right. Mm. My biggest support uh, and to anyone is, I think, at least man, now I have a lot of friends of my age and everyone. And we all miss that fact that the, that one support, na, it's okay. It's fine. Uh, just to say that, to confirm that it's fine. Otherwise, now who else do we go to and ask it's fine? Banker ko puchhenge, to banker to bolega hi nahi fine hai. Aaj ki maturity mein. Aur left, right dekhe, to dosto ke saath hazi mazak se time nahi milta. To kab puchhe, kis ko puchhe. Someone has to assure that I'm going the right way. And I'm very, the way I walked up to you, I do that and ask. If I find that I can get some answer from him, I'll take him in the corner and ask him that. What would you call that? That trait in you? Upfront. No ego? No ego, absolutely no. My my lower back is very flexible. <laughs> Good way, better way to put it. Yeah, because I asked somebody, what does that mean? He said, you don't have your ego. He doesn't give you anything from the earth. And he doesn't give you anything from the earth. He doesn't give you anything from the earth. You are showing that you are ready to bend. Your ego is low. And uh, yeah. So, hmm. That's textile for me and uh, garments was, did so well that I didn't even know how to cost garment. Hmm. So if you're in Zara and I had, so my first collection I did is I took some fabrics from uh, Hind Mata. Hmm. Theater ke piche, ladies, dukaan thi, all these chicken fabrics. In you know, Bombay? Bombay, just hmm. picked up anything, filled a car, went to Dharavi, did some block printing on it. <coughs> for Zara? Made some shirts. No, I just first made it. Then I called them up mm -hmm. and I went and showed them. They were like, stunned. I said, it's a temple. That jage, oh, it's a mad place. You know, they have a very simple philosophy in the company. Someone's coming from China, it takes them 24 hours to come here. Someone from India takes 18 hours, 16 hours to come, come here because there's no direct flight to Spanair. 
So everybody is ready to come here and show them this fuchsia with that work on it, right? You designers cannot dream that. Okay, we've got the paparazzis to release whatever is shot in Milan and all of that. Yeah. Because now the phones are your freedom of speech. Yeah. Earlier they had to be like those kind of thing and those are paid guys who give the images out. And uh, so they cannot refuse somebody. And why do you think is that? Because he's coming, he's taking the trouble to come and show you a bag of 4,500 garments. I'll relate it to you. If someone is coming in from Korea to show you design of bottles, mm. every week, five times, five new guys are coming and showing you bottles of designs. Why would you even dream of saying no? Why would you even create no, a but wall? It's a great, uh, it's a great culture. Create, why would you create a wall in your office saying, Ke, bhaiya, Busy ho aap log, aur busy koi nahi hai. Exactly oh, my yo, point. Bottle design See, kar hai. That's the bias. Oh, designed that hai then yeah. why? What else is to learn from um, Inditex? One learning you mentioned is, uh, so you know, office, no meetings uh, can be refused. So I, what I, I take un, uh, unregistered numbers. Uh, I take it because I just think someday a vendor is calling me. And they said, I should miss. Number kahin se, kahin se mila hai. I said, I should miss. 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 Their logic is very simple, okay. Uh, this has got a skewed tailored pocket. It's done by hand. This can't be stitched. The designer has to find this. And he has to listen that the Japanese guy is saying something. And he has to take it back. And you do what you want to do behind. So my shirts would go like, they made, they have a 100,000 square feet <coughs> showroom in the office. Blank white, like a clinic, like a lab. And they're building the collection for the next season which is nine months later. So they've come and they say, okay, we are thinking about the city name, boys and graphics. Someone has thought, we've built a board. And luckily he comes with this t-shirt and I go with this t-shirt, I go down to the, it's a closed private area. And, oh, it fits well, come back. And while they're walking up only, they'll realize, Russia, okay. Europe, fine. US, done. 40,000 pieces, one color. Done. No PO. You pack your bag, you leave. You start production. While, while you sit in the car, you've already started taking the yarn, booking, closing. I'm, I'm loving this. And they're, Wait, and they're this, very fast. And that's why probably they are the most innovative and they're able to turn things their around speed, and bring the best. Their speed is simple that we are not creating bombs. There's no mistake here that red, red wire got connected to the yellow so it will explode. Whereas you talk about the American businesses of brands and everything, their SOPs and their methodology, their books, their Bible they give you to read. Zara never inspected my factory for 12 years. They never even visited where I am. And when they give you an order… And I asked them once, that what if you don't get your shipment on time? So that's your loss. You lost business from Inditex. So trust is also another very key part of their… You uh, lost Inditex. And your blue didn't come now. We've already bought three times more because we already know some shipment gets cancelled, some flood happens, some political crisis, ship has not come over our time. And we have a wall to create of all these pieces on your wall that you see has to come at one time in the store. That's cool. And when they give you an order for 40,000 pieces, do they pay up front? Nothing. Nothing. POE nahi hai. And so 90 it, days. So the so credit line in our business is 90 days. So if you fail, it's on But you, you can it's discount it. Uh, from the Swiss bank, which is their credit line at 1% per annum. I only worked with Europe all my life. And from 2004, I had a beautiful chance, uh, 2005 actually, to start uh, two brands in Italy, uh, Miss 60 for Man. And because these Spanish designers go here and there, so they try to explain them that he's the vendor, he can come and do it. I created 60 Man, I created Gazzarini. Everyone knows Miss 60 the Italian brand for women bread, very successful. Why Miss 60? So Diesel was coming up, mm. and uh, which was with Renzo, and uh, Replay was always there like, Replay is like Tata of fashion. Mm. Yeah, It's there, it doesn't move, it doesn't try to be over smart, it stays classic. It has the truest jeans, the best jeans in the world, till today, the classic Italian jeans and was this the first time you got like real financial independence 25 to 37 with zara good money my my f independence of finance is much earlier zara and like italian for me the, the, 
the two to four crores was also very serious yeah. money. Yeah, I would, <laughs> so with Zara, it was like I would walk off uh, and I love calculating my profit at least 10 times. Mm. I have to do that. How much would you make per year during the Zara era? When you were 25 till you were 37? 15. 15. 15, 10, 15 crores a year? 10, 15 crores a year. Yeah, yeah that's serious money. Yeah. So, and we're talking 20 years ago. And yeah, that's so serious money account even for today. inflation, it's <laughs> probably… Yeah. yeah. But now… Probably few maybe, million so dollars a year. It was always a 30-35% business uh, for me to take home. And uh, it, it came by mistakes like, I don't know how to cost this garment. I've just come from textile to apparel. Consumption, what is it, what is it, what is it, what is it. So, I was calculator and I was doing something And I would just say $13. But the garment cost $4. Mm. Five dollars, mm. and they would bargain and say twelve. Mm. So at that time, I would know that it was more than that. That trend got set, and it was euro. The currency had just come in. Mm. They moved out for five, seven years to dollars. That's when you started losing a bit. Then global competition, Primark coming in. When mm. Primark came to Spain, they all became tough because they owned Pull and Bear, Bershka, Lefties, Primark, uh, Zara, Oisho, Zara Home, and they're told about nine brands, Starry Various. What's your learning from this time that someone who is 21 today can use looking to start a fashion brand? I think this… If you want to start a fashion brand ever, uh, first, the pinnacle of course is creativity. You have to have a nag. You cannot say that if I'm successful, go and make a fashion brand tomorrow, which every most of the guys are trying to do it. Nag for? You have to have creativity. You have to… Mm. You have to look fashionable before even thinking. What is creativity? You both said this. How do I define creativity? Give me a wall and ask someone. For example, when he's saying. I'll rearrange your furniture right now in a different manner, it'll be creative. And and it's about about actually giving the presence of mind to that subject. Someone like you will say, Why am I doing this? Why was he given that task? Hmm. My mind is somewhere else. I'm a number guy. Is it your. Ability to move away from conformity that you are saying is creativity. I would leave the also, furniture yes. this way because with, yes, because conformity is yes, the is ability, nature, yes. I, I would define it as the ability of letting things evolve in Dif- your mind differently from convention. Different from convention, something that's evolving in your mind, you're able to envision it and then possibly create something out of it. At least. Paintings, no, but, even the products that I create, that's… that's yeah, but in the mind, people like him, maybe… I'm sorry, I'm just judging no, no, you over and over it. again <laughs> because I just feel that you're the math side of the man. So in the brain, you have a creative side and you have a multiplier side. Sometimes you leave multiplying because you love the creative side. So that's what I do in my business from then to now. My office is white because I paint it three times a year. Staircase is white. Because I have to see colors and I, people have to understand colors in my office and people have to believe in colors in my office. We can't have any other color as such. So it has to be white. High maintenance, but yes. I also learned from my dad, he would paint the house every year. So it, you, it would come from him. But tell me something. For example, do you have to look at colors to I get a design today, out of it? Or can you visualize them and just by thinking, create something out of it and then put it? To practice. Both. It's but that's goodness. creativity, right? How do you bring a certain emotion to life mm. that makes the other mm. person who's experiencing mm. it One more time. Uh, get some nostalgic feeling, right? Something that they have experienced in the past and they're able to remember that and bring it. I, th- I think I would define creativity like that. No, creativity is such a, it's such a common word, but a hard word to define. Okay, 37, Inditex journey finishes. Why does it the finish? entire Europe experience for me uh, kind of dies at 36, 37, 38. It was like a because the margins are going down, the European crisis, currency, dollars, they want to trade in dollars, though they are in Europe, they want to hedge and make money out of that transition. Uh, France was doing very good for me. Denmark, I was the uh, very large vendor for Jack and Jones. Uh, that was a very same time I was. Uh, I just went to Copenhagen and I saw another brand on the wall again, Jack and Jones. So with Jack and Jones also same thing, Yellow Pages Diary, found Jack and Jones, called them up from Copenhagen, went to Billund, it's another village, uh, 30 acres of land, 
to single single floor huts made which are all brand offices lc idhar khulta hai shipping department us jhopdi mein hai usme hai usme outstanding design man made from india mm-hmm. slept on calcutta streets mm-hmm. Found a Chinese wallet which said Jack and Jones. So he labeled his brand called. Wait, wait, who? Mr. Truce Paulson. He's the richest Danish man. The guy who created Jack and Jones. Jack and from Jones from Calcutta. Because he was Danish, huh. but he would come to Calcutta, huh. make garments, and carry it in a suitcase to Denmark and sell. Really? Yeah, and that's his story. And uh, we have a fairly large Danish business. It's incredible the connections between India and Denmark, yeah, Sweden. Yeah. Mm. And he's the richest uh, Danish man, and. Uh, Of course, he owns. He has four th- two thousand. Wouldn't the founders 6, of Lego be the no wealthiest people there? No, it's him in apparels. And he uh, started like that. And he started like that. Uh, young days, coming in Calcutta, making garments. East India Company का ज़माना था. Garment बनाना, जाना, बेचना. He was selling it without a label. He would fly down and keep doing this. And finally, someone told him, "यार एक लेबल तो लगा के लाओ." He said, "अभी क्या लिखूँ?" मीटिंग Interesting. Like being white is a job in China. Being white is a job. Hmm. Our bit time will come. Would go. So that's how it. Uh, so he he was a great uh, man, and in that time he wanted to take the Indian tram. He want to inherit it. He runs a lot of schools in Rajasthan. Uh, in uh, he's the largest founder uh, of the largest fund for tsunami. in tamil nadu still he operates that so did a great great business again they have a department called express the missing part of the buyers which they didn't buy and the season is running so who can give you 45 days delivery so our lead time in our business is generally uh, 100 to 140 days from order placing to shipment on the vessel and uh, we i learned the nag of uh, things from inditex kind of a process that you can ship anything within even 45 days and so, how do you do that uh, firstly don't interact too much with the buyers is it okay it's not okay so when i first took their order and i took a, a, an order of a shirt with that embroidery and they said we bought it 30000 pieces i am supposed to send them and this for approval the button for approval the quality for approval the thread approval mm. And they called me up. I said, "Lo, you think we have people here to sit and approve all these things? We liked your shirt. We gave that shirt back to you. You just have to make thirty thousand shirts." I said, "But these are the processes." I said, "I don't know. We have nobody to even file this. What all you sent to us? And every other brand in the world will sit and do that filing job. Tests here, tests with that chemical, tests with this. I said, it's a garment here." Bomb But do you think number. that would have interfered with the quality of products no, that they because, were delivering? No, because because it, it's a okay. I was a I was a luck by charm kind of a situation that I had a small factory in Bangalore. I moved from Bangalore. I moved to Bangalore because of the factory that I put up here. Uh, there was another thing in between. I took the largest loan of our family of thirty-seven crores and uh, put up a factory in Bangalore. First land to buy. Uh, would you be the first garment manufacturer having a factory in Bangalore? No, no. the kemohans and shahis of the world but Shai. you invested money in buying the land to yeah, yeah. set up your Put own everything yeah when file to file vidhan sada vikas sada what all the what year ki i do be uh, 2004 and 5 how important do you th- think this is ability to leverage risk taking ability very important for an entrepreneur absolutely i mean uh, let me put it in a in a better way that I have a set of family and mentality, right? It, it's it's a way of thinking, a risk taking, and there are always an outlier. I am an outlier, and I said I want to take a loan, and I didn't badly sell it to my dad, but I just gave him a very different equation. That end, when the depreciation is getting, it's the same as getting in your tax. I thought that the depreciation is not a 
कोई अलग से भगवान आ रहा है हमारे घर पे वो हमारा ही पैसा वापस घूम के आ रहा है अंडरस्टैंड और आई डेंट को रिलेट इन दैन and i kept putting this can fact. you explain it for the audience the concept of depreciation when you start a business like that one or this one both both oh that one was very simple i was putting 100 bucks and i thought ki uh, someone explain me tumhara tumhara to company mein profit hai hi tum 10 15 crore kama rahe hai tumko itna hi byaj dena hai and uh, my loan was 8.5% minus 5% for tough scheme textile upgradation scheme and which was resulted at 4% सब्सिडी आफ्टर सब्सिडी सो तुमको ये मिल जाएगा एंड देन एंड में तुम्हारा जब प्रॉफिट आएगा दस रुपया तो तुमको सौ का डेप्रिसिएशन मिलेगा बारह परसेंट बिल्डिंग का इतना उसका इतना उसका इतना तो ये माइनस हो गया तुमने एंड में तो टैक्स इतना ही भरा सो द वे यू आई लुक एट दैट वॉज लाइक यू नो सम गॉड गिफ्ट चेक इज कमिंग हेर इन दिल्ली डेप्रिसिएशन एंड डैट डिन दिस वॉज टू मच फॉर हिम टू ही जस्ट ट्रस्टेड मी ब्लाइंडली ऐसे अभी इतना तक ले आया लड़का तो अभी जो कर रहा होगा ठीक ही कर रहा होगा एंड हाउ मच मनी डिड यू हैव व्हेन यू बोरोड 37 क्रोस आई हैड सो माय माय पार्ट वाज 25% नेट मनी इन योर नेट मनी टू योर नेम इन दिस वर्ल्ड ओ जस्ट वन अपार्टमेंट ऑफ 3 क्रोस व्हिच आल्सो आई बोरोड फ्रॉम माय डैड दैट वन आई आई लिटरली टोल्ड हिम आई वांट टू बोरो दिस आफ्टर मैरिज आई वांट टू मूव आउट टू एन अपार्टमेंट एट वर्ली सी फेस and i said i'll pay you this back in 3 years but i did it in one year and uh, that was in when i was 25 first year two years after marriage and uh, and after 5 years of that i went and put this factory and uh, so maybe 5 10 crores what you had to your name 10 10ish i feel like this is the biggest whenever i talk to people who are very successful like you guys often it comes down to risk taking ability who is willing to put it all on the line yeah otherwise it doesn't happen okay we were at 37 crore loan when you had 10 crores to your name i was i was devastated and screwed at that time of this loan mm. uh i thought i could make a cheaper factory buying my own steel getting it converted making a pb structure mm. the factory design was designed by me because mm. i was stranded in hamburg airport mm. and i love that airport so i said yahi banana hai mm-hmm. factory aisa nahi banta lekin mm-hmm. i landed up making an airport there mm-hmm. so it's a 200 feet mm-hmm. ceiling and uh, six curve hangers mm-hmm. hangers with carts moving inside everything automated put the works there someone should make a movie on your life i know yeah. <laughs> what fascinating thing i made all the sewing machines which came from italy i said they make it in blue color and mm. i were i were set back with blue so uh, so you change the color of so the i said you should be all ferrari red so you are from italy so you have to do that otherwise i don't pay you bahar mein ya tumhara technical problems or i want to go see your factory so what is they made red created? machines mm. and uh, mm. and uh, we did that the entire building is, uh, is is a submission of design what replay factory is because i manufactured for replay as well and it's basically a coal factory all brick building it still has the tracks for moving the trolleys in metal the war time mm. in the reception going to the office and things like that so i said i want a brick building and that's when i saw the builder van gogh total environment mr kamal sagar who's no less in creativity uses only indian materials to build his homes for consumer customers that was a part yeah so i saw his project there took a picture uh, got caught by security <laughs> because i thought abhi ye banana hai aur is ek ladke ko samjhana hai drawing aise so do the whole thing but the factory the way i expected it at the same time i built my house here and then suddenly the water was stopped dad said to help with you if nothing is nothing is moving after this what's happening here so that 3 years was a stress crying weeping early morning 6 o'clock in the factory getting it up building it myself because i took i didn't want to waste money on contractors i would have saved maybe 3 5 months earlier which today i don't today i just build finish it fast let my mm-hmm. turnover start so that factory created a huge impression in bangalore this is coming so often in your story no ego shameless relentless is a superpower i came to your house also like that 
ऐसे ये होगा बड़ा होगा किसके लिए पता नहीं मैंने तो मतलब इवन अबाउट यू गैज आई टू जस्ट क्विकली सी कि भाई थोड़ा शर्म रख किसके साथ बैठेगा थोड़ा तो पढ़ ले ठीक है विल डू दैट एंड देन कम्स वे आई वेंट टू से ऑलमोस्ट वन एंड हाफ ईयर टू ईयर्स डाउन वन एंड हाफ ईयर ऑफ डिप्रेशन कैंड ऑफ थिंग गोइंग टू गिव माई डिजाइन देर सिक्सटीन ईयर्स लिविंग ऑलमोस्ट एट ईयर सिक्स टू एट मंथस इन यूरोप होटल्स बेड्स flights i almost landed up being at 19 to 22 flights a month so i just gave up all that milan sounding this. quite nice to me going to milan madrid being on flights no, and hotels <laughs> no no it was it is not exciting <laughs> at all not at all i mean come on it, i don't think you would have seen any of the sessions it's been very exciting so to save money in the hmm. earlier days i used to sleep in the railway station under the heater lamp like this hmm. uh, put my bag for 2 dollars in the but you were making 10 15 crores a year me jab start kiya tha 19 20 ka tha to क्लब में ज्यादा था स्मोकिंग वाज माय प्रॉब्लम नॉट द ड्रिंकिंग बार एंड करके स्ट्रेट ट्रेन नेक्स्ट कंट्री सागे होटल का पैसा बच जाए बट फिर आई आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन व्हेन यू आर सेटिंग दिस फैक्ट्री अप एंड दैट सीम्स टू बी लाइक अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्रोजेक्ट दैट यू पिक्ड अप राइट ऑल थ्रू योर जर्नी 2005 टू या इट इट वाज अ ब्रिलियंट प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ माय लाइफ सो was it because you wanted your own manufacturing or was it that the no, so i had a small factory i wanted it large so there are ancillaries like in your manufacturing right i had everybody has a garment manufacturing factory i said i do garment dyeing i have to send it outside i want garment dyeing inside hmm. i do printing like this i send this panel outside i want to print inside i do embroidery outside i want to do this inside so i put all these ancillaries inside the factory a very large black temple What does stylish mean? Like, if you were to say, if you can uh, coordinate your attire, uh, is it the colors that go with each other? Is it the fabric? I'll give you a simple thing. If I'm, if I was in black today, and if I had any small piece of black cloth with these uh, dandelions on them, mm. I would probably yeah. have it inside here, showing a bit here. Then, so I've styled myself today. I've kind of embraced. Basically, you pay more time and attention. So, mother is a stylist. Mm-hmm. Leftover food or whatever ingredients, at night, at 12 o'clock, the girl will make. She'll style something and cook something out of it. Whatever is available. So, basically, basically how do you put? Together. How do you put stuff together? Is style. Yes. So, in, and now, fashion is wearing clothes as well. Fashion one. is today. Okay, straight jeans, tone jeans, broad mm-hmm. leg jeans. Fine. It's today. It's not mm-hmm. tomorrow. But yeah, there but are guys who wear those same broad leg jeans. They've never left it since the 80s. but they'll also go to the skinny today they'll also wear a bell mm. because their style quotient says today i want to be like this okay let's go to 37 to rare rabbit i'll tell you the appetite for rare rabbit in the market right now okay i was at a event i actually even didn't tell you this i was at a event with some investors one sovereign fund southeast asian country uh, their india ceo or something like that was there he comes up to me and he says Why don't you reduce your allocation to rare rabbit so we can do more? I obviously said, you know, तुम बड़ा मेरा ख्याल रखते हो for me to reciprocate, but there is that much so that you invest in him. There is that much happening. So that you invest no, so in that him. So that he can invest more in you. I didn't want to even raise that much. I didn't want to raise at all. That comes as a different thing. But for the guys who are twenty, and uh, when. when you getting depressed out of not getting charm of designing going there and they are trying to take the same garments out of cambodia and then china and bangladesh and you're getting just defeated and how much you're not going to catch the callers and i was not getting the juice and i always had that that there has to be juice in the game i'm i can't be that startup blood i'm not i am khadakpur i'm not all these uh, that yeah. that breed of uh, or that or the breed of mine is very different and my backgrounds came differently to me and their backgrounds came differently to me but mujhe wo gestation period wala aur dil dhadak jayega mera to yaar itna kitna 3 saal 6 saal ruk raha hu ki ek din light jalegi kab jalegi yaar kidhar hai switch how can you take so long to find a switch you know so they cannot someone who doesn't cannot make 2 plus 2 make money i think it's for me i don't know how to swallow that and one day i was standing at forum mall and i was like i've created brands and why men don't look good here yeah style wise and what are these brands doing actually when i was then also to come out of this european business i told all these european guys please give me your indian office business i'll change everything for you i don't want to travel and all of that 
I did all of that. I created good lines for all the fashion brands here, and and, and I was expensive for them. They could not afford me, or things like that. And I said, forget it. Yeah, let's create a brand. And here I come after two years of depression, almost that uh, I'm not happy with my working and nothing. I was quite suddenly out of the picture, and I said, I want to create a brand. And what should it be? And I said, I came up with Rare Rabbit, and only because. Uh, rabbit is a sexual mammal. It multiplies the fastest in the world. And uh, did you like the sexual content connotation the or the multiplication? The sexual part as well as the multiplication uh-huh. because I multiplied thrice for my my own uh, <laughs> legacy. <laughs> <laughs> so and uh, but men in India should be rare and respect their sexuality and be rare in that. You are a rabbit, but be rare. And the the least you can do is to dress. So that you can address the, your opposite. That's the whole funda behind it. Ritesh is like I am doing it already, bro. <laughs> and you had Mr. Vedanta once saying that, uh, or Vedanta Steel, Mr. Agarwal, that to address you have to dress. It was in his Forbes magazine first. He actually line. dresses well. Do you think styling in India can be a big business opportunity? I'm doing it. It is. That's why it's uh, probably so. We curate uh, men's fashion uh, in a very different. We do it for India. The way you said that hydration cannot come from Korean recipe because I know it's very cold there, and they need less absorbency, and we dry faster. We have equatorial belt. Similarly, our tummy is two inches higher, and uh, than any average person. So our last button is to be relaxing on that. It's horizontal, not vertical. And when I started the brand, I I just put in a line, and uh, I went. I created that line. I invested money in that, nothing, one and a half crore, twenty five thousand pieces. Just made it, color blocked it, because if you go to our store, you'll see color blocking in our scene. If he's what he, I'm only navy always mostly, so I will not go to a particular section of my store. Uh, have and I styled myself well? Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> He's just being kind. <laughs> if you want tips, then I can. If you want tips, then I can. Like for example, and I would like to say yeah. because you said not to be kind to him. For me, grey and navy don't go together. It's just has what to be goes navy. best with navy, 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 navy. navy, 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 Mm-hmm. So, uh, it's monotone is like you ca- high and low is not the right way of dressing. I'm glad you didn't ask about me. <laughs> the beige and the black and the light grey and the black or something. So no high lows. It has to be mono. We were in the inception story of Rare Rabbit styling. I said this is a lot of loss because uh, I've seen all the fashion houses of India and uh, all they do is all I thought that we we create a structure of buying. We create clothes. And we have an actor or a face to the brand, and we try to sell garments. And it's been done repeatedly in the country. And uh, neither I have the money, or I'm going to, or I, or the nag actually after maybe the factory investment that I can go and get a celebrity face, and then. Do you think that works for someone young starting a brand, paying an influencer, never, actor? Never. No. No. Why is that? For me, uh, you'll think differently because it's a women category. On influencer, I think different. Influencers, but different. even When influencer a, in fashion, I would no, think different. Yeah, but I my office believes in it. I don't. Why? Uh, for me, it's uh, short lived. The way I engage myself on Instagram, I'm also a consumer. Uh, I'm too fast, and I need new, 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 new. So, so it's. I don't know how much does it resonate to convert and understand the brand. Uh, I follow. Among all the actors, maybe uh, Mr. Pankaj Tiwari and uh, Amitabh Bachchan, for two different one is legacy in my life, and uh, one is uh, the new, I think the new man of substance who speaks great. So uh, Pankaj Tiwari. Some yeah. people on social media tell me I look like him. If you act, but he has exceptional it, depth. But yeah, I think you could pull off very well in Mirzapur. I can, uh, I can, I take it as a compliment. He will, he will, hundred percent. He was good well, in Mirzapur. Someone should yeah, cast yeah, him well. No, but director of can course. move things, and they need a first cut and that UP style look. It can pull it very well. You can. 
then you have to change a lot. <laughs> have you tried? Ye bhi nikalna hoga. So what worked for Air Rapid? There's a so, thousand uh, people trying. Rigidity. It's very important. Uh, Explain rigidity. Rigidity for me is that I'm the only. We are the only brand which has no logo on the chest because I never wore a brand on my chest all my life. Whatever wealth I would have earned in my life, I never wore a brand which someone can recognize what I'm wearing. And that's what probably Italians taught me, or that's what Spanish fashion taught me. They are never on the face. I had a choice of doing jeans wear or formal wear. This is the only two fashion concept existing in India. There's nothing called smart wear, and uh, which exists in Europe. It doesn't exist in uh, in the rest of the world. There is no so there's jeans. Uh, there's business they call formal in india and there's a smart the smart dressing doesn't exist in india and i said i can't do formal because i have to compete with such legacies here and i can't do jeans because it cook, it caters to youth youth that i have been cigarette kaise chori karke liya hai aur mang ke liya hai aur bike mein gaye hain wo sab utna paisa nahi hai ki i can burn and uh, to my equation of mind because i knew how that 2 and 2 works is that if i don't have a multiplier i if i don't get that gp i'm not going to sustain to sell what is gp gross margin the gross profit and to do that gp everything around it has to be perfect so my store has to be designed the way i imagine the europeans see it and there's another underlying message for all designers or creative people who want to do anything in india is that do it from what you have seen or perceived from the west because you're trying to create a culture here Hmm. You're not brave. You're, if you're making a jutti of Chandigarh or you're making a chaniya choli of Rajasthan, then bring that culture here. Then make your store look at jharo ka balcony hmm. hona hai, sandstone ka banao, jo bhi karna hai, because that that essence comes firmly as a juice. But if you're trying to say the word Western world, then you have to be resonating it to a storytelling, communication of design, holistic approach, and the difference that you're trying to first create. Like oversized T-shirts is selling very well today. What you're wearing. The boxy fits, but it's already a clutter now. Now, if someone has to come with this, he has to be very adaptive. That I'll make the same boxy, but I'm going to come with city names today. Tomorrow, can I use the word just Bachchan because it's not registered? The Khan, something like that. How does so one find that gap? Like what you're saying? How do it's I? It's intuition. Find it? It's your. It comes out of desperate mistakes. Most of the business I think are created by your own uh, realization that. I miss it in my life. Mm. Uh, I think most of them, in product at least, uh, unless I don't know what the backgrounds of the uh, FMCG companies. Otherwise, I've been commercial ones, but the new ones, anything I would say, it comes from that. This is what my style was. It became brand. The blue orange became a brand. Mm. I respect them. Jaywalking. I, the jaywalking because that's the cult. That's the way work. The design. I think these guys would have probably been somewhere in the world. Or got hold of that one piece, and they said, "That's my style." That style became so popular among the friends. Yeah, अच्छा लग रहा है मुझे भी चाहिए काम मिलेगा काम मिलेगा. Do you think because the clothing market is so penetrated today in terms of access, you have to hit a niche and play there? So rightly said in your lines only, we are a clothing manufacturing country. Hmm. We are not a fashion business country. Hmm. We don't create fashion. Hmm. we don't buy design sell fashion other than the designers that we have who are doing i think the best in the world also they're mm-hmm. world ranking we have dior making their uh, their entire marriage gowns in bombay that's also embroidered in india i mean i have seen back in those day armani sending the suits lapel just the silk from italy to lucknow to do one embroidery of chicken work and goes flying back there to stitch it with the suit there so that's how They, and they go that mile, mm. to, and they in those days when there's no Instagram and all of that, they were doing it from an archive book, and a designer there is as eager bird, who's taking the trouble to go to the 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 Instagram, which is the library, then picking up something and trying to throw that knowledge in the Armani's office that I want to do this. It's available in India. It's in Lucknow, and they said, okay, talk to global office Hong Kong. They'll connect you to a buying office in Delhi. We'll send it to them. They'll get this embroidery done. उसने उसमें अपना घर का पेंटिंग करा लिया होगा। वो सौ पीस भेजा होगा। घर का पूरा पूरा घर एक्सटीरियर इंटीरियर पेंट हो जाएगा। अरमानी का ये ऑर्डर है ना एक एम्ब्रोइडरी का। 
What was the breakthrough point for Rare Rabbit? I would say the breaking point to answer is that uh, when we were stuck on our business, uh, so the biggest challenge we faced is getting real estate. In hmm. India, there is no phone in India. There is no new bird. Ko that's why I was asking her again and again. In your industry, do they pick up that call? And uh, I proposed this once when I didn't have one store also with one of the largest builders and developers. That you'll have such millions of square feet. Give 3,000 square feet in a corner of a mall. For young guys to come and demonstrate their talent without signing those LOI big, big pages. Just give him so much table. One hanger. Is that how malls work? Do they care which brand is coming so much? Oh. Or is it about the rate so per I'm, square feet? I'm trying to sign or get... No, they have to create an ecosystem. Mm. They cannot have five rows of chocolate and ice cream and coffee shops. It's an ecosystem which I've learned and it's a very hard business they are also cracking. They so how do, if I started... They trusted Rare Rabbit, they give a store and imagine nobody comes in there. Mm. So I kind of bring down their footfall. Mm. And if they do 20 mistakes on a floor, mm. That floor is dead. The 21st store will not get rented because that person said that, footfalls no, not No, the 21st wala to bolega, aap kya kare, sir, koi hamare floor mein ghoomi nahi raha hai. Hmm. There are some malls who do man-woman mix. They're not dissecting properly. So if I'm a brand, what can I do to be more attractive to a mall? Like honestly, I'm 21, speaking, I start a brand. Impossible. I want store space. Impossible. Is there no hack for I would not say the word impossible. Just forget it. Maybe in tier 1 mall. Can't I go to a tier 2 mall? Forget it. Really? Kaini. So you're telling me if a mall has empty store space and I'm willing to pay the rent, they won't give me? Never mind. Yeah. See, and they're not wrong. Hmm. Who are you? You're a kid who started with a garment. I'm someone to... paying them the rent. Yeah, but your store will open. I don't know if you're a designer, you're an architect, you're a designer, you're a designer, you're a you so second round ka wahega. Aap tab thodi na bolega, shutter ban kar de, naya yarn lene jate, kapda banate, fir wapas laate, ek mene baad aenge, because aapke baap ke paas paisa hoga. But he's running an ecosystem. So what you seem to be telling me is, you have to do this only, only as a suggestion or advice, whatever I have learned from this. Go to a high street, pull up your sleeves, go open a store. High street kya hota hai? On the roads, I mean, like Indranagar is a high street. Hmm. And there you will get space. Yeah. Okay, last two points from you. Hack for somebody trying to start a clothing brand. This is actually personal interest to me. I the hack? For Just someone find, young. Find a difference. Give us some examples of differences you think might work today. Today? Khadi. Khadi? We are the only country in the world mixed with this fiber and this yarn. And you think going fiber. back to India, using Bandgani, that Kantara, Khadi, putting these together. So that's women's side of the Khadi, you know, uh. Uh, which is very highly embellished still with a lot of work, which is very women. Mm -hmm. The true, true Khadi India, it's a textile. Like Gandhiji Khadi. The Gandhiji Khadi, which is in the world. It is the best cotton you can touch. There's Khadi is cotton? Khadi is nothing but uh, raw cotton, which has got seeds still in it, not removed. The seed uh, kins are not removed from it. It's a little rough to touch. It's rough. Uh, the organic, if this was an organic, this would be, if recycled, then it is going to be rough. Uh, you dye it with only vegetable dyes and everything. You spin it this way by hand like Gandhiji. You, On the chakra. Yeah, and so you have very uneven yarn. Mm -hmm. And then you weave it by hand. It's the softest fabric. It's the most organic fabric that you want to be in. And there are villages living on that today. Uh, they're desperate to get even money. Today, raw mango is doing a brilliant job. The saris are expensive. And today, the advice to a 20 year is go and try to touch khadi because it's the only fabric in the world which only exists in India. There's no other, every other fabric is global. This is only Indian. Actually, interesting idea. We should. We should try t-shirts in khadi. T-shirts right? nahi banega. T-shirts nahi banega. Nahi banega? Nahi. You'll have because shirts or the bangalas. You have to leave it by hand. Yeah. Shirts, bangalas, kurtas. So it can only kurtas. do... It, it's a rigid fabric. Actually, you I'm, can make this. I'm so intrigued because I think apart from beauty, if there's anything else that I ever think I would want to build or try my hands on would be fashion. And not that I've thought about it much, but everything that you're saying is sort of building a story in my mind. So when you say khadi, I'm already thinking, can khadi be built 
a brand out of khadi can it be built at scale would it, it be at be a, also it can be built at a scale yeah 100% in india and yeah. i and think the, the cloth before is, i retire it would be done and the cloth is would the pricing would be premium right yeah it is it can't be so cheap and patriotism is in right now patriotism is in right now uh so we all wear denims blue denims hmm. we all think denim is western right the denim comes from indigo blue denim is basically de nimes it's the nimes which is france because the twill weave was first woven there the blue added in that was by the americans who took the blue leaf from tamil nadu so our leaf is when it dries it it becomes blue the green leaf becomes blue <clears throat> and we make we are the only country who grows organic denim mm. so I advise to them they should find these kind of correct denim names. and khadi and fashion designing is not cut paste pieces here and there it's about creating a complete right look and to get the margin do a good storytelling alongside with it mm. you have to sell the story with it you just sold your story being a a financial wizard guy saying that 6 hours charity city recycle will organic you have to speak something Our story stores, most important very important that's where and ip sits that story comes story is ip story is the story biggest is the ip story is emotional connect with biggest your consumer IP. today's ip which goes beyond today's products that like even for you like that yeah, yeah. story yes. sells absolutely i think i was able to establish that connect first the story started selling before the product started selling so in our store you will get fragrance in all 120 stores the same our office sells smells the same uh, we get complaints uh, when our omni channel goes that you send us used garments because mm. our clothes smell of so you have a lot of perspiration when you sew right there are 69 110 people who handle one garment and it's their perspiration which is coming from what they've eaten and if they're veg or non-veg is a different smell from your skin as well pay attention to detail yeah so you have to neutralize your fragrance of your each garment when you wear your t-shirt you your store has to smell so if the store is smelling then the garment Garments will carry the, smell less yeah no it takes that but how do you do it online when you're selling so it online so when it goes omni order and it goes from our store people think we have sent them worn garments so they lodge a complaint for that so we are busy always explaining that it's been our so these are some rigidity of your business plan you should never deviate with give me another word for rigidity i think adamant be a be 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 core a be stuck to your core concept particular no i think you i see i designed the brand saying the rare habit will be written here on the belly because italians if they wear a blazer their name generally is here you're willing to take a different and then you view. don't even deviate yes you you take a contrarian view and back it fully so fellow friend of mine in this business he said manish we to messed it up we ludhiana ne bola sir wo lal wala chatka shirt aajkal chal raha hai usne bola aajkal checks bhej do aap zyada wo bol raha hai sir aap thoda sleeve length ye thoda badha do itne comments aapko is desh mein aayenge ki us comments ko aap handle karne ho to brand aapko kuch aur hi ban jayega so is it you managed to keep that noise away i so uh, because you said i'm rare or i never listened to them we are the only brand in the country we don't do road shows we don't show our collection and take bookings from the entire trade of 700 people who we 700 points we sell today we don't show our collection and take orders from them we just send what we think is right for them for their market because our ai uh, our research our understanding would you say would you like phrase it in a manner saying client doesn't know what he truly wants in india for sure and at the same time india is according to me the most hungry country to to ask for give me more and give me new just don't give me the same and what's the cycle of innovation so in uh, i'll give you a i'll give you a better understanding in zara innovation is every day our office is every day in india fashion is two season divided you buy once and you buy twice second fall winter spring we buy every day it doesn't stop if i have seen this i can go back and i'll say ye chahiye 
So for example, let's say you've designed this shirt and you've listed it on online, in your stores, etc. For how long do you think it'll stay relevant till you have to change Not the design? Not more than two and a half, three months. Two and a half, three months. That's very Not quick. Not more than that. That's very quick. And we are the largest online in the country. Not metaphorically, but in genuine terms. Also because this also, so all our businesses are by accident and people of 20 should not vary of that and scare of that. I didn't get stores. I have 25,000 pieces in my house. I had to start a website. I started the website 2016. I think I was the only one as a website there to design that. I'm very particular about my font. So my font doesn't change on our website. Our deck, letters, anything you write will be the same font. You use months. this word a lot, particular. <laughs> yeah. attention to detail, yeah. Yeah, we don't. Mm. I mean, it's... Just. So, but you get these kind of hindrances and you should not move because that's how you stand a bit. Do you think chains are in? Similar. Not bad. I'm quite jewel always, so. Yeah. This, this chain actually is made by one friend of mine called Shruti. Her husband is one of the fittest men yeah, yeah, yeah. you will ever meet. His name is Manish. Lanka, you know Manish? Manish. Yeah. He's my table also. Yeah. So he would just be in the gym like if between the time of 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. he would be in the gym. Wow. Like Three I hours. Would, I would go in between from 6 to 6, 45, Manish is there. You go at 8 o'clock, Manish is there. You go at 5, Manish is there. He is something else. Yeah, but she makes some interesting jewelry. Outstanding jewelry. Yeah. And she only makes one one thing. And no, she, she gave me this. The uh, best. So she customizes yeah. it for you. No, she it's, only makes it's her and one her one thing. Should be her name, Sushma is her If you want name. diamond jewelry, that's the woman, according to me. Yeah. She means not for all this. I had but somebody, this looks really good. Yeah. I had somebody she I lost me recently. She, she made it. Yeah, she told me that. Yeah. What's your channel of choice now? Is it digital? Is it retail? Store. We are 50 weeks. Store, store. Because country dynamics, roads are getting built, malls are getting up. Uh, what great builders are building today as terms of mouth. It's crazy. It's where all they're doing, what all they're doing is like... He loves his stores, right? Like I, you can I feel can it. See it. You can feel I can it see it. I can see it, but know. I have a very different statistic going on in my mind and I was reading so the So we play our playlist fashion. music for all 660 stores from our office. Really? Uh, you yeah. control the music of your stores centrally, is it? Centrally. Okay, so what I'm getting takeaway is quite complicated. The <laughs> You're a complicated man. Easy, yes, sir. Be straightforward, you'll, be, you'll make everything easy. You're an avoidant attachment type. Do you worry about being vulnerable or showing your insecurities? No, I don't. No? I, I'm the most open person you can ever get to know about anything. That's why he said he has the most flexible back. About anything. Mm. Again, creative. Parallel with you. I think... I think attention to detail is something that came across while you were speaking many, many times. From the perfume in all your stores, to the music, to where the buttons are, Indian waist is two inches higher. So whoever is attempting this needs to pay that much attention to detail to build in this space. That young 21-year-old. And, 21 and also old. keep looking around your own society. Hmm. Story, most important. Also IP. Your story is as important as, as the product, if not more. Yeah, absolutely. Another big thing that came across from Manish, no ego. Shameless, relentless is a superpower. Ability or willingness to bend your back, very, very important. Can't have shame when you're asking for business. And, and not to forget, India is a very colorful country, so don't hide from color. And I think in the world, we are a very colorful that brand. can be your superpower. Say again? In a world full of ego, that can actually become your superpower. The world full of ego. Yeah. Not having one. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to Ritesh. I shouldn't have come uh, interjected. <laughs> it was doing all right. <laughs> I love being a spectator. I came to you last because you're very popular. Thank you. I read in some magazine that you're the most eligible bachelor in India. Was. I thought that was, was you. Was. Before, before so, I was, so you get crushed his house as well. I, I should have. I haven't yet. When I go to Delhi next, I'll get crushed. Please, please. I'd love to host you. So Ritesh is a very unassuming, sweet, amicable person. Basically, he doesn't show his real self to anyone. 
somebody so nice can't be so successful fundamental belief in life i uh, agree so the mask that he puts on is so strong and it's always on which must be so much work <laughs> that he so must he has be more tired masks. so he has too is many it? masks No, no, no. I think Nikhil first But gives you so much love. He says sweet, well. unassuming, huh? very amicable, and then goes for the kill. It's <laughs> like, okay, tell us about your personality. I think you told some of it, so I'll borrow. Mm -hmm. I think uh, calm. I try to make sure that there's just a sense of calm as m in myself and then around me, if possible. But if I can't keep it around me, at least inside of me. Um, Why? I like it that way. You never get angry. No, I do get angry sometimes. But do you I emote when you get angry? Do you show it? Yes, yes. But uh, I think uh, it is not as volatile. I think uh, I'll try to put it in words. Uh, I try to put it in words more than in actions. I think. When was the last time you cried? When was the last time I cried? I think I cried when uh, I had the I had I had my baby in my hands. Yeah. I think uh, it's it was hard not to cry then, uh, but yeah, I before think before that, before that, I cry probably every uh, few months. Sometimes out of no reason, sometimes out of happiness. I think um, one thing that actually I know I I cried, I cry a lot. So I I deeply because of. my upbringing family and so on uh, believe in existence of god so whenever i am in uh, uh, you know a place of worship or even at my ho own home at at the place i uh, worship i think sometimes i end up crying probably for no reason can i extrapolate and ask you why you believe in god i think it's a tough one to put in words but i think uh, there have been multiple i genuinely personally believe that uh, i did not deserve all i have gotten all my life so i'm just genuinely thankful and i feel like there's probably a greater power which has just given me this opportunity uh, so uh, i think that's probably and again i'm just mm. trying to play it back but that's probably the reason Can I tell you something that is slightly similar between me and you? Is we've been on this train of youngest A, youngest B, youngest C, uh, because I think even though I'm significantly older than you, I think in our own times we were young at doing something. Uh, a very natural parallel to that, something I face deeply, right, is I have imposter complex. in so many different facets of my life deep down i believe i have gotten something i have not worked enough for uh i also believe i am not the smartest i am not the most hard working because there is a lot of tangible evidence for this i can find you 10000 people who are smarter than me and more hard working than me absolutely uh we happen to be in that position in a very circumstantial manner yeah uh, belief in something that you have never touched or felt like god i'll probably get trolled for this trolled as <laughs> but belief in something that you haven't touched is also a byproduct of our circumstance when you say god what is the concept of god to you what do you mean by god uh in my view just a greater power than humans i think that's uh, my concept of god are you taking the religious connotation i think uh, i know there is a fine line between these but i would say spiritual not religious so organized religion no spirituality yes is that what you say no i'm not like for me personally i think uh, the belief in the power of spirituality is higher but what is uh, spirituality i often ask people to define spirituality each one tells me a different answer what is ritesh and question? that is what it is supposed to be hmm. i think for me it is uh, like i mentioned to you i think you may have heard about uh, in a lot of books people write uh, this person is god fearing hmm. um, uh, and i think uh, what it basically means to me is that 
देर इज समबडी हु कीपिंग अ सेंस ऑफ अ चेक और ओवर साइट ऑन अस एंड इज अ ग्रेटर पावर देन अस एंड हैज द एबिलिटीज टू डू थिंग्स विच ह्यूमन्स कैन नॉट डू दमसेल्स यू मीन इन टर्म्स ऑफ पनिशमेंट बिकॉज योर डेरेवेटिव वर्ड वॉज फियर आई वॉन्ट से फ्यूर बट आई थिंक मोर अ गाइडिंग लाइट सॉर्ट ऑफ अ वे टू मेक श्योर दैट यू कैन रीच योर पर्पज फॉर वट एवर यू आर अराउंड आई मीन आई आई लाइक वॉट यू मैंशन आई वॉज वन आई वॉज कमिंग बाई वॉज वॉचिंग योर रिसेंट वीडियो इन विच यू मैंशन अबाउट वी टेक आर सेल्स टू सीरियसली एंड यू नो दैट फंडामेंटली यू नो यू आर अराउंड फॉर अ सर्टेन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम यू डू द बेस्ट यू कैन बट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लेगेसी इज फ्लॉड इनहेरेंटली आई थिंक आई आई फुली एग्री विद दैट so i think the whole point is um, for all the time you're around you try to do the best you can uh, despite like you mentioned i agree with your point that you mentioned earlier which is the conscious mind tries to do all the right things mm. but subconsciously you're still human so that mm. so, so it's like a constant battle right that mm. you want to make sure that you're consciously doing as much to pursue your purpose as possible so i think that's how i would uh, put spirituality this is a question i want to do you fear god or submit to god much later in life or it was always your you know actually due to upbringing yeah i think it was due to upbringing ha so hamare na kind of change for me in the last 10 years so main aapko batata hu to hamare ghar ke so i grew up in a place in south odisha place called raigada it's uh, i think 60% of the population is adivasi which is uh, tribals right to wahan pe um, there is a temple near a house uh, it's called majigariani temple but she is the tribal goddesses who effectively protects our uh, town it's said and there's history behind it and so on so for example odisha you would have heard about cyclones very often ki bahut baar matlab baad aa jati hai floods hote hain and so on so people say that the reason why there's been no floods in our town ever is because she's protected us now many people may have different opinions about it but i think as i grew up uh, around there um it just sort of became a sense of belief um, uh, that that god captured now it may it may be rational or not uh, is a separate story but it's just my personal belief as as an outcome so for example uh, many people uh, used to notice this i used to uh, at work uh, take off my shoes and go inside for the longest time and i at some point of time i changed it i think 3 4 years back but it's uh, for the longest time uh people used to sort of uh, there used to be a joke that you know he is at work by just noticing that the shoes are outside so uh, so that so but that's i think that's deeply personal to me i think it's probably the first time i'm talking about it at all but uh, it's deeply personal to me i don't think i impose it on anyone mm-hmm. it's everybody's own choice frankly but mm-hmm. it's just something i personally uh, believe in but the clarity in in the manner that you're articulating is very refreshing cuz you're not being defensive or aggressive in your stance but you're still being very concise and clear i think at the end of the day that's all one can hope for right but start from childhood so let's get to know you like we got so to know you're them you're not convicted abhi jad sahab aapki daleele sunenge abhi time hai isse No, but look, I, I'm I'm really enjoying this format, right? I think it's yeah. just so uh, refreshing to not just go through what Nikhil said is the rehearsed part and just sort of go through the uh, like just get to know uh, individually and and so on. So I I, I really enjoyed listening to both of you and your stories. Well. So I grew up. Uh, I was born in a place called Bisam Katak. Most people wouldn't have heard about it. It's a, a village in the Raigada district where I lived after. Uh, we have four siblings. i'm the youngest of the lot uh, i e the most loved um, uh, among the siblings uh, the eldest is almost 8 years older than me so eldest is a sister um, uh, so there's quite a bit of age gap um, so uh, you know and uh, typically um, uh, parents or especially mom but both of them used to encourage better education as a way of being able to graduate out of the town we grew up in because in some way education is sort of uh, brahmin family or no we uh, agarwal so uh, uh, marwadi family but uh, grew up with a very um, 
Odia kind of uh, uh, attributes because uh, multiple generations of both papa and mom had grown up in Odisha. My mom came from a village called Itamati near Bhubaneswar. Uh, but but you know I think there when I when I used to speak to other people saying how long has this family been here they say that for as long as we can remember <laughs> right like even the oldest of people so I, I don't know how but it just so happened that they were there and so I think and the town is small so everybody sort of knows each other right like. almost every family every individual will know each other there's not there's no concept of like somebody lives in the place and you don't know who that person is so koi naya agar train se utar jata hai to aapko pata hoga ki ye naya insaan is an alien who's alien national not alien in the sense of an alien like you know us ke forms mein hota na are you an alien <laughs> so i think the, so i think uh, uh, elder three siblings are like asian parents dream mm. engineering business school good job all the other ticks right like marriage children and 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 all the tick marks um and i was quite inspired by my elder sister what did your parents do so mom was a homemaker mm-hmm. papa had a small shop initially mm-hmm. uh where he would sell like uh grocery products and so on uh but later he uh joined a road construction company as a, a manager uh in, in in that company so anyway i think um growing up i was more the rebel relative to the uh, other three kids because of so much one love one son oldest sister middle so eldest is a sister second is also a sister third is a brother who's three and a half years older than me and i'm the fourth so do you work with any of them no so the eldest sister works for one of uh, the subsidiaries of snp mm-hmm. second sister standard and poor yes Uh, the rating agency the, the rating index, agencies uh, one of their uh, you know is, companies acquired what are they doing giving india such bad rating look i think uh, it's a big uh, problem we are also rated by moody's and fitch same and what is it now double b minus i think we are b rated now but no, no i think we are b b minus as india oh sorry i was telling uh, the oo rating no no <laughs> sorry <laughs> so you yes, know in, i'll tell in, you it's such a big problem we don't talk about it enough every country's cost of borrowing is dependent on how we are rated by these three arbitrary agencies and what S&P, are their criteria of rate six are quantitative in nature like uh, gdp rate fiscal deficit inflation mm-hmm. past track record of servicing debt the other 10 or 11 parameters are arbitrary in nature it's more coming around perception and stuff like that and at triple b minus correct me if i'm wrong later but i think it's triple b minus now our cost of borrowing is higher than countries which are one tenth our size let's say a kazakhstan but has the same it's... rating as us or slightly lower or whatever slightly better rating let's assume kazakhstan has better than us i don't think they do i think they're slightly below us in the table if they are able to borrow money at 5% for infra projects building roads train airport and whatever we land, we land up borrowing at 6.5% a 20 year term loan if we are borrowing 10000 crores in reality that these numbers are significantly larger than 10000 yeah, yeah, when we are paying back at the end of 20 years with the dollar this 10000 we are paying back maybe 25000 they are paying back 17 18000 that tiny yeah. difference in rating changes yeah, yeah, our like, cost of infra significantly and it is not just for the country right it's also for corporations who whose source of income is india yeah. so if you are an indian corporation you may be like any big company you don't get a a rating because your sovereign itself is is not is rated, not, is rated uh, that well enough but this is something we all need to make noise about like wow. uh, i think what these three agencies together are doing is extremely unfair and bad very detrimental to the long term growth of india going back i think the eldest sister has sort of been a so, so i was coming through everyone the second one uh, is now between jobs uh, she is left uh, cognizant and because she is not joined i'll not share but she's gone to a move to a consulting company uh, elder brother works for mindtree uh, and i am the uh, fourth one how have the equations between the siblings changed because you are such an outlier today equation among siblings how are you guys growing up and how are you now look i think growing up essentially the there was a unique uh, perspective where the eldest sister was like a l- little mom 
of sorts, right? Because the age yes. difference was so uh, high. And she was sort of, in our family, the first woman who, uh, you know, she was among uh, the top rankers in her school when she uh, graduated out of 10th, like the overachiever uh, Ghazal, right? So she was the first one who went to engineering school. Uh, she got a job uh, at TCS. So like our dreams, at least my dreams, where this kind of villages you explain you are coming from or district or taluk, I don't know how do you, how do your parents even think to educate all of you with such high uh, pedigree? I mean, ठीक है एक होता है कि पढ़ाना है वो भी मारवाड़ी इज़ नगरवाल पढ़ाना है इस वन बेसिक होता है flying out all four no so I, and and, and, I'm, I mean, and I think a lo- large part of it I think is driven by as much as my parents I would give credit to the elder sister also because she pursued that path and everyone followed then every like it basically became like a mm-hmm. little bit of and every elder and younger sibling will relate with this if your elder sibling got through good grades in your class and graduated and if the same class teacher is there they'll say look at your elder sister or brother they did so well <laughs> and like what are you doing <laughs> so it sort of becomes a little bit of a peer pressure right so i think she for the first time i think um, i think i was still in my junior or middle school between somewhere between 3rd and 5th grade and she had just gotten into her um, engineering school first year and she had what was the entrepreneurship fest so she went to barampur which is a place in odisha it's a bigger town uh, for en- her engineering schooling so she came back during her break and she comes and says uh, we had an entrepreneurship fest mm. i had no idea what that word meant mm. so that was the first time i figured that there is this new word mm. being so the rev- eldest sister like mother figure the other two yeah so i think the younger sister second sister was little bit like the um person you create trouble with mm. right like you know uh, were uh, you naughty i i was quite naughty yes, right? i know i know of some of the naughty things you have done as an adult but think dig a little deeper <laughs> as a child i have no idea what you're talking <laughs> about i would want to know what's that <laughs> dig deeper as a child and the brother brother ke sath mein um it was a mix of uh, i would say um, learning and also that one sibling that you fight a lot with hmm. that's a combination right so i think so for example uh my uh, love for sports mm. started with him mm. uh, because he and his friends would play sports mm. and i wanted to be uh, a mm. part of the mm. group this again is something i hear from a lot of successful entrepreneurs some affiliation to sports i've never yeah, been I, able to figure out what the connection is but actually even when we recruit people mm. uh, we uh, try and recruit uh, people who have been good in sports especially why is that do they do better at they do very well with us there are two three reasons why i have deciphered the outcome the first is especially we pers- uh, uh, we would like to get people from team sports so we believe that their ability to work with other people and make sure that the team wins rather than individual is better pursuit of excellence because in sports you are competitive you want to win uh, you don't want to uh, sort of be average as as an outcome would you say clarity of thought important for an entrepreneur i think cla- like i call myself in a company chief clarity officer hmm. i think fundamentally one of the biggest challenges and i think that's probably the similar word of rigid that you were saying i think having a clear answer hmm. versus saying that um i don't know, like i don't know how it's going to come and let's derive it out of 20 other things hmm. and or whatever people are saying let's do it i think hmm. that fundamentally is different i would say this true for any leaders you can be an entrepreneur i think he had that to a certain he, he had that and even she, she to some extent that. right like mm. she said this is the kind of product i want to mm. build so i think that um so you say that some of or most or whatever some of your decisions also come by your gut and just without being a very derived formula let's sit and get a calculation done or you just feel no i'm very clear it will happen and let's look i, I <laughs> I think uh, probably given today I have been hearing a lot of depth in conversation I'll try and sort of go a little bit deeper in in that construct right so I feel that most of my decisions are uh, genuinely actually a derivation uh, of many things but uh, what comes out at the end is the gut feeling um, so uh, I think how do you define gut the word so so in my view the gut feeling is a summation of experiences I have had mm. 
गुड और बैड बट I have gone through some experiences where I have learned that well this works for me hmm. and this doesn't work for me hmm. and sometimes what works for me may not work for anyone else hmm. and what works for others may not work for me hmm. and I am very comfortable with that hmm. I have no uh, fomo of saying that well it works for someone else I'm, I have a uh, interest to learn why it worked for others but uh, I don't have. Um, uh the the so that's what that's what i sort of define gut as mm. uh from my perspective mm. um and i think being contrary like it it sort of it means that you have to be contrarian mm. uh i feel being contrarian is the other thing that as an entrepreneur is very valuable right mm. like you have to be able to sort of have an opinion which maybe the average people around you do not mm. um and basically and we, mass is generally wrong I, I, <laughs> relative <laughs> basically uh, Be what careful. everybody else believes don't convict you yourself. don't have to believe <laughs> maybe that's that means the same thing that is a startup right yeah yeah absolutely i think the startup is fundamentally saying that what everybody so fundamentally you have to build something which is against convention if it is convention the incumbent will likely do it better by virtue of experience and time yeah yeah and yeah. the mode of capital yeah yeah absolutely hmm. absolutely hmm. so i think going back right i think uh, uh my interest with entrepreneurship or the first word came there before that my elder sister used to say that she wanted to be a pilot so when people would ask me what do you want to be i used to say i want to be a pilot even i used to say that as a kid right yeah stupid astronaut i had ha <laughs> i had no idea as a not even pilot <laughs> like hamare yahan se plane bhi kabhi nahi guzra tha to hame pata bhi nahi ki wo pilot karta kya hai but badi behan kehti hai aur wo matlab family mein sabse chatur hai तो इफ शी सेंग इट तो मतलब हम भी वही बनेंगे तो कंफ्यूजन नहीं तो उसके बाद उन्होंने आंट्रप्रनोर कह दिया आई ट्राई टू फिगर आउट फ्रॉम द डिक्शनरी व्हाट इट मेंट उसके बाद में आई स्टार्ट सेइंग आई वांट टू बी एन आंट्रप्रनोर सो माय रेबेलियस नेचर वाज दिस दैट आई ट्राई टू सॉर्ट ऑफ बी डिफरेंट कंट्रेरियन दिस इज अगेन समथिंग व्हिच इज कॉमन टू अ लॉट ऑफ सक्सेसफुल एंटरप्रेन्योर्स रेबेल ऑफ्टन विदाउट अ कॉज या ऑफ्टन विदाउट अ कॉज आई थिंक इज इट इट्स मोर अ लॉट of startups huh. nature only matlab banna hi hai to bas huh. this is like coming bull. coming down to the same thing rebel contrarian against convention anti incumbent right same Absol- thought absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely and i think where does the rebelliousness come from was it rebelling against your parents in the early days or what they wanted you to do no i think uh, quite the contrary actually my parents uh, relatively they felt that the elder three children had done so all right mm that they in some way um, also motivated to become sl- me to become slightly more rebellious like they were generally more comfortable with me doing things mm. which they were absolutely not comfortable with mm. the elder three children mm. which is probably also the reason i never stole right like where basically if i asked for it often they would give me uh, which was not the case for my <laughs> elder uh, elder siblings mm. so uh, uh, And, and and i think i'm truly thankful to that extent like i feel like if i was probably just born as a third child hmm. i'd not be who i am i'd i'm uh, i'd be who i am only because i'm the youngest of the lot I generally think. middle kids are more rebellious because they have to set themselves apart makes sense the makes top sense. and bottom organically get attention <laughs> As long as they know it's the last one, that. there are no yeah, surprises. Yeah, I agree to that. I, like for example, yeah. <laughs> but even then, the middle ones are still the rebellious. At one point of time, hmm. principal said because he jumped the fence and hmm. came late, da da da, hmm. for seven days he can't come to school. Hmm. Like if any of my elder siblings had got that hmm. uh, decision from the principal, hmm. I think uh, they were up for like lot of pitai, dart. Uh, th- th- there was no coming back from it. Hmm. like for me it was like you know mom sat me down she said you shouldn't do this mm. dad said he's a young kid happens mm. so i felt you know i'm i'm like ladla ha matlab mujhe laga ki matlab ab to i should take full advantage of it and and be as rebellious as i can so great communication with your parents good communication with parents i think more with papa mm. uh, but uh, uh, because dad was more the person who said do whatever you want to be mm. um uh he uh, but mom was the one who would possibly sort of be the more uh, like you have to study well like if you don't do that you'll like be in raigada and run like a pan shop mm. uh, right like so mom would paint the contradictions much more uh, uh, actively um, uh, communication is, is, skills continue in companies like in oyo 
Yes, I think uh, that's a very critical one. Let I me think. let me rephrase that question. If your management is doing something that is annoying you two on a scale of one to ten, I might bring it up when it's five out of ten. Do you bring it up at five out of ten, two out of ten, eight out of ten? How how quickly do you communicate? I think the feedback loop is or the communication loop is quite quick. Hmm. Um, I would. Now, annoying. And the magnitude is quite small. Yeah, I'll just uh, yeah, I'll just uh, basically sort of uh, swing it to say annoying me may not be like there. The magnitude may be very high, but anything that I believe that is wrong for the company or wrong for the um, role or the purpose they're pursuing, I think I feel very comfortable to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Bring it up, but along with calling myself chief clarity officer, I consider myself also a solution mm -hmm. officer. So I bring up the problem, but I often couple that with a solution. Uh, but I feel very comfortable in bringing up a, um, a conversation. I'll, I feel while in my family that was very valuable. Mm. I think there was one person who changed it for me. I think uh, the person is Bejul Somaya at Lightspeed. Mm. Uh, I he, know Bejul. Yeah, so Bejul invested in us like mm. they invest very fast. Huh? Yeah, so like mm. they take no time at no, all. No, with no, us they took a long, long time. Yeah. That was a different story back there in the day. There was one company we were reviewing recently. Let me not name the company. So we were negotiating with the founder and he had come to the office in the afternoon. He went to Lightspeed <coughs> at night. He came back to us in the next evening and he said, Lightspeed signed the term sheet. Lightspeed. Yeah, no, Lightspeed Literally. has, they, they call their themselves name. as a high conviction investor. So they say uh -huh. that we invest very little, like they would invest in a year, like four or five companies or three, mm. four companies. But in the ones they believe in, mm. they would move very, very quickly. Mm. But with us, they took longer. I don't know why. Maybe they took longer to believe. But mm. um, I had, so they invested. Your self-deprecating nature is very attractive. Do you think that also holds good in the work ecosystem? Because we are so used to looking at people who are embellishing themselves constantly. That that one startup which comes to you and self-deprecates becomes a novelty. Do you think that works? Yeah, look, Contrarian I think, mindset in a different manner. Yeah, I think in some way. Uh, but I, I have learned that, you know, that's the only way, especially um, if you have a highly talented management, right? Mm. Who you want to retain for a long period of time. Mm. There is no other way uh, you can work with them rather than being absolutely... Um, absolutely straightforward, honest, vulnerable uh, mm. with them. And then because you spend most of the time, most people don't recognize it, but they spend more time with their colleagues than with their own families also. Mm. So due to which you basically become an average of the people around you. That's my in, favorite in, line in the office. I said, I know you more than your wife. You spend 11 hours here, 10 hours here. So to that extent, but I think, um, I feel personally that also comes when you become truly comfortable in your skin. I think the reason why the self-embellishing character gets mm. built is because you gen genuinely have a sense of insecurity where you feel self like self-deprecating nature. Yeah. Hmm. You know, what will it mean? Can I ask you another question? I'm sorry, I'm digressing please, please. much. Ritesh and Oyo dissect the two apart from each other. Ritesh the kid, Ritesh the teenager, Ritesh the young adult, Ritesh at 30. What do you think are your personality flaws hmm. at its very core? I've come back to this because we stole money from our mother's purses. You did not. So there must be something else that we need to know. The rebel in some way. Not a flaw. No, no. I'm, I'll conclude that. Hmm. The rebel in some way I think came out of a personality flaw hmm. uh, of trying uh, new things. Hmm. And the flaw in it hmm. is potentially um, lesser attention span. Mm. Um, or lesser span in, I give less time to something to fully uh, uh, bake open, right? Like, um, I feel I tried to do too many things in the early days of our company. Mm. And I feel when I fully decided that I'm going to do okay, OEO. I'll ask you another question which might help with this answer. Yeah. Think of a kid. I keep coming back to kids. I don't know. Yes. Think of a kid. No, I agree with that. Three to seven. I think uh -huh. that's when your, uh, you know, your your uh, formation or yeah. foundation as an uh, individual is built. Yeah. Think of a kid. Okay. Uh, I'm in a room hmm. with a kid. I put a marshmallow in front of the kid. Hmm. I say I'm going to go out of the room, make a phone call, and come back into the room. Hmm. If the marshmallow in front of you 
I tell the kid, is still there when I come back. I will give you two marshmallows. Then you'll have two instead of one. When people tested kids, actually, they figured that 80% of kids are not able to delay gratification until the person mm. goes out of the room and comes back mm. and they eat the marshmallow, mm. 80%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when they tracked the 20% of kids over a 15, 20, 30, 40 year period, they figured there's tangible evidence to prove that the kids who were able to delay gratification turned out to be the most successful when they grew up. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. think not being able to delay gratification could be a flaw in you? Personally, don't bias it on what I have to say. I'll tell you the two personality traits, which is confusing me about this question. Mm -hmm. I have very high ability of delaying gratification in terms of wealth creation, for instance. Um, on the other hand, I have very low ability to delay gratification mm -hmm. in terms of beginning the pursuit that I wanted. And I'll give examples of both mm -hmm. in a tangible way. So it'll mm -hmm. explain this to you better. I genuinely fell in love with this idea that, you know, I will go digitize small hotels. And I thought the time is now. And I said, I'll do it now. This is right after 12th grade. First, Papa got to know and he tried to reason with me saying that, you know, get your college done mm. and then do this. Mm. And I said, you know, I like, I genuinely believe the time is now. Mm. And of course, Papa having better communication, mm. he, both of us then came up with what the communication to mom will be, mm. which basically became all the kids in our 12th grade are taking a gap year. Mm. Consider this the gap year. And if it doesn't work, I'll move back. So this is where I did not delay gratification. Mm. On the other extreme, mm. I think uh, probably just, so it was, this year completing 10 years. So mm. we are, uh, we've been around for some time. Mm. Probably until three or four years back, mm. uh, I had a few lakhs in my bank account. Mm. Right? You never did secondary. I never did secondaries. Mm. Because uh, the purpose and the enthusiasm was so exciting mm. that nothing else mattered mm. um, in terms of context. So I think uh, there is a conformity in me also. I have, I'm a unique combination of rebellious and mm. conformity. Mm. So for example... Can I, can I take away from your last statement? You're able to delay gratification when it comes to money paid out to you without complicating how that's yes. a secondary round. But you find it harder to delay gratification when it comes to growth or when it comes to public perception? I think money paid out to me, I'm willing to delay gratification. I'm unable to delay gratification when it comes to um, intellectual stimulation. Which comes via? I think, uh, you know, solving problems, right? I think finding... Same uh, problem, new problems. Because once a problem is solved, it becomes less intellectually stimulating, right? Yeah, no, I, which means new problems. Mm -hmm. I think, which is, which is the whole point I was going back to, right? Mm -hmm. That um, for me, I, last five years, I had mm -hmm. to change myself mm -hmm. fundamentally to try and make sure that every day I reviewed the same thing. Because businesses are inherently boring at some level, right? So you have to make sure that there's the 30% excitement, which is solving a new problem, uh, creating a, a product feature or one of those things. But 70% of it is just ops, right? Like doing the same job a little bit better every day. Um, and that did not come naturally to me. I think I had to train myself to uh, become that person. Who do you emulate? Ritesh the person. Who do we I all, emulate? We all pick someone and do it. Wow. Consciously and subconsciously. I think as a business person, somebody who at least over the last five years, and I said that I tried to transform myself, especially with the onset of COVID or around that period, four years maybe. I think that is Uday Kotak. I think, mm -hmm. I feel like he's one of those people, again, first generation entrepreneur. Most mm -hmm. people don't recognize, built a bank, first generation. He's king of delaying gratification. Yeah, and you mm -hmm. you sit with him in the room, mm -hmm. there's a sense of calm, mm -hmm. right? Like, And every time he begins in classic Gujarati saying, mm -hmm. Paise a gaye. Mm -hmm. Mm. So he, like, there's just a sense of, mm. uh, when you begin the discussions with him, mm. there's a sense of, um, th th like the world may be burning mm. and he will represent that in words, but he would not emote it in actions, right? I agree, like I agree with you a hundred percent, but if you have to derive something from this for a 21 year old we are talking to today, 
what do you think people like Uday Kotak, his generation had that the 21-year-old today is lacking, which is relevant to the world of today? I would say three things. Mm. The first one is being absolutely comfortable mm. to make sure that when your friends are sharing beautiful Instagram stories of going to pubs, restaurants, or very exciting places, uh, you are pursuing things which are not exciting. And you sort of tend to believe that it is because of your circumstances. Would you say that's delaying gratification? That's delaying gratification. But I'm just trying to put going it in. To, going to a pub is instant pleasure center. Yes. Right? Yes. There's, there's a psychologist who said a very interesting thing. What is the difference between pleasure and enjoyment? Pleasure is having that piece of chocolate which has sugar in it. Pleasure is having a beer maybe. Pleasure becomes enjoyment when there is a gap yeah. between two pleasurable events and you add memory to it. Memory happens by virtue of adding a group around it. Yeah. No, I think... This, um, the other way to put it is if you look at, there's this uh, Netflix documentary, mm. which is, I think it's called the Blue Lines or Blue Zones. Blue Zones, Blue Zones yeah. right? Which Absolutely. talks about longevity. Yeah. And longevity has something similar, which talks about a sense of community, happiness, but at the same time, making sure that your food habits, etc. are sort of not designed for short-term pleasure, but long-term enjoyment. So okay. delaying gratification. That's one. Not... Not succumbing to the short-term pleasures. Absolutely. And also not having to conform to average people, like average um, uh, peer pressure around you, right? Like I think… Don't you think this generation has that in check? Compared to Uday, Uday Kotak in that generation? They were more conformist than the 21-year-olds of today? I think uh, the 21-year-olds uh, have… Uh, if I were to uh, re reverse the word of uh, conformity, peer pressure. Mm to look the best on social media, mm. to make sure they dress the best, mm. to make sure that they have the best number of posts, to make mm. sure they have the most number of likes. So you would say social pressure. Social, uh, social pressure. That's probably a better mm. word to it. Mm. Uh, but I think to avoid it mm. to a significant extent is a very critical thing mm. because that pressure is so high and mm. so noisy today mm. that it can end up pushing no, you towards doing things. With that, no patience. With no patience. Underlined. Mm. If that is there, at least they can handle all that. Because, and I grew up in like similar generation. Now, I think 10 years back is already a generation apart. Yeah, yeah. But I think 10 years back, mm. when I was growing up, mm. uh, people around me would look at me and say that, you guys are doc, right? Like absolute doc. But studying all the time, doing business, who does this when they are 19? Mm. And if you uh, get bothered by it, you will lose, in my view, the number one thing that it takes to get an entrepreneurial success or any success, which is perseverance, like being at it for long periods of time. Because there, there are so many reasons to give up, no? Mm. Right? You should not get one, one layer under your skin. So, for example, like I told one of my friends, I mean, my barsati is here. Come this metro station and come to the auto. Barsati is here? In Delhi, barsati is like... Um, a thatched roof uh, room at the top of a house. So that's where I used to live when I first moved. Like most people who moved to Delhi live there. So, but I had never told him that it's a barsati because you don't tell it in normal condition. I just said, my house is here, you have to go to this metro station. So I said, I have to come to the auto, you don't have a car. Right? Like a usual kit. This was a wealthy kit. There were some kids I was trying to, not when I was starting my business in Delhi. A usual kid would have gotten so bothered that they would have stopped calling people to meet themselves. But for me, it, it was very comfortable. I was very okay with saying that people will say this to me. And if I do well in life, it'll be all right. If not, then this is the means I have. So being okay to let go of social pressure is what I would encourage. And I also got bothered by it a lot of times. How but old was that? When? I was 19. 19. But I also got bothered by it. But I recognized that I'm bothered that I'll get more money in the jail. I'm not going to come in the jail. You're telling me, what can be worse? So, what is it? You're telling me, how much money is it? Correct. In your house. Then, the people of entrepreneurs came to all of them. Then, after that, I said, if you have a problem in your vehicle, then you have to change the road. Then, you have to change the road. 
तो हमने वो रास्ता पकड़ लिया जिसमें चल, चलते हुए लोग ज्यादा मिल जाते तो वो ऑन्टरप्रिनर्स मिले देवर सिमिलर रेबल्स विदाउट अ कॉज सो इट देवे सबसे दोस्ती बन गई उदय खोटक यू सेड सो फर्स्ट इज डिले ग्रेटिफिकेशन डिलेड ग्रेटिफिकेशन सेकेंड इज नॉट सोशल नो सोशल इन डिफरेंस इज द न्यू कोर एब्सोल्यूट एंड द थर्ड वन इज आई थिंक अ सेंस ऑफ ह्यूमिलिटी एंड ह्यूमिलिटी इन डिसीजन विच कैन बी वेरी लार्ज सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल नाउ डेज वन आई मीट यंग ह्यूमिलिटी इज काउंटर इंटिव टू सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंस विच वी एस्टेब्लिश इज अ प्री रेक्विजिट फॉर सम लुकिंग टू स्टार्ट अप no i think they they are independent uh, strong characteristics i think you can, can you be, be self confident and humble yes you can be self confident yeah. give me a, for instance yeah. so uh, self confident would mean that i can build oyo into a incredible success mm. humble is uh, it's the first time i'm building a hotel business so uh, i don't know what will go in this journey but i will figure it out so i think that's at least that's my view but to the third point will you add to the end of that line can you help me his point of no ego willing to bend your back absolutely absolutely and i'll and i'll explain an example mm. with uday kotak's example right mm. he built a fantastic franchise mm. um, in his previous avatar before the bank mm. and he was so he started a, a, a bill discounting business if i, I uh, correct, correct. remember it right he was okay to add the mahindra name to the bank mm mm-hmm. mm right He had built a big business. He didn't need to do it. Yeah, but he was okay to do it. Nowadays, when I meet entrepreneurs who have just started the business, mm. not all, mm. like ninety percent of them, like I'm surprised, young entrepreneurs can be so bright and they have all these characteristics. But there's some people who have this sense of saying that a sense of um, superiority that I have done so much already. Mm. I think um, uh, for people in that generation, like him, like Narayan Murthy, and various others. Mm. they built incredible businesses mm. but we're still able to accept that but in comparison i'm still a rounding error and i have to do a lot more mm. and i think that was that humility that allowed them to become you know a bigger version of themselves uh, consistently they say people who made a lot of money very quickly often hate themselves and the world subconsciously <laughs> do you often hate themselves and the world can you find yourself or somewhere yeah like deep down <laughs> deep down no yeah i think uh, i i interesting I, question though i mean absolute i i i like really? myself and you know i try to uh, do more to like myself you Actually, like the world humility also allows you allows a lot of common people to accept you on a very easy approachable manner Otherwise, and humility be, is just being honest. In yeah, my view, you'll humility is so surrounded with your own self and your X Y Z. Look, humility का मतलब ये नहीं है कि आपको सिर्फ ये कहना है कि नहीं जी हमें कुछ नहीं आता है. तो तब आप under confident हैं. मेरे हिसाब से आप में confidence होनी चाहिए. But you should at the same time be able to accept that there are things yeah, you don't know. आपसे भी बड़े और हैं. हाँ. And there are other people who have done better than you. I want to understand that more. उसको गाना जो नहीं समझ में आता है. That people who have made a lot of money very quickly, deep down, hate themselves. It's There's a certain pathway to arrive at the conclusion. I think it passes through imposter complex. Imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah. I I could relate it to yeah. that. Mm. Yeah, but I think the imposter complex is serious one, right? Like I genuinely believe I that I had I have no business sitting here, mm. right? Like, our whole Raigada town would have gotten laddus if I had gotten Infosys me. Uh, assistant technical idea. engineer wo that is the starting job called hmm. in which you get 3 lakh salary like if i had gotten that our town would have celebrated i would have been super happy my mom for the longest time thought that i have gotten into friendship with wrong people who have gotten me to this entrepreneurship uh, buzz hmm. so i think uh, mujhe genuinely hai ki mujhe lagta hai ki matlab kuch to kuch to ho gaya hai जिसके कारण लाइक देर वॉज बाई मिस्टेक आई गॉट इन टू अ क्लास रूम एंड इट इज हैपन मेनी टाइम्स इन लाइफ आई गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल विच इज वेरी क्लोज स्टोरी एंड आई हैव नेवर टॉक्ट अबाउट इट बट वेरी क्लोज टू माई हार्ट सो आफ्टर ट्वेल्थ ग्रेड वॉट चेंज माई लाइफ वॉज अ थियल फेलोशिप सो पीटर थी एज अ फाउंडर ऑफ पेपैल अर्ली इन्वेस्ट इन फेसबुक हाउ डज अ ट्वेल्थ ग्रेडर नो अबाउट हू पीटर थियल इज रेबल विदाउट अ कॉज फिफ्टी थाउजेंड डॉलर्स हंड्रेड थाउजेंड डॉलर राइट तो तब इकहत्तर का होता था रुपी तो इकहत्तर लाख रुपए बिग डील राइट नाउ हाउ डज ट्वेल्थ ग्रेडर गेट टू नो इवन अबाउट पीटर थियर सो रेबल विदाउट अ कॉज है तो साल भर कोई मूवी नहीं देखी बट जब 
कुछ इंटर्नशिप स्टाइपेंट से पैसे बचे उससे सोशल नेटवर्क मूवी देखने गए इन दैट देर इज दिस पर्सन कॉल्ड पीटर थी गिव्स द फर्स्ट हंड्रेड थाउजेंड डॉलर चेक सो नेक्स्ट टाइम गो टू साइबर कैफे हाउ डज वर्क जस्ट फॉर पीपल हु आर वाचिंग एंड इंटरेस्टेड नॉट जस्ट थील फेलोशिप बट एनीथिंग सिमिलर दैट दे वुड लाइक टू अप्लाई फॉर हाउ डज वन फाइंड आउट वेयर दीस स्कॉलरशिप्स आर एंड अप्लाई फॉर देम लुक आई फाउंड इट थ्रू सेरेंडिपिटी बट आई विल गिव अ फ्यू एग्जांपल्स दैट आई एम अवेयर ऑफ एंड सम ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट आई एम आल्सो डूइंग एज एन आउटकम सो थियर फेलोशिप इज वन व्हिच इज अ प्रोग्राम स्टार्टेड बाय पीटर थियर वेयर ही गिव्स 100000 डॉलर्स to 20 people earlier it used to be age limitation under the age of 20 acceptance rates are lower than ivy leagues but there's one condition you have to stop out of college right if you're in college if you're in college <laughs> i was not in college so it was easier hmm. and the thesis behind it the contract's first line says we never let university interfere with education hmm. so education is everywhere hmm. including the wtf podcast hmm. um but you don't have to go to university for it but university is one of the sources of it you can also pursue education there so um i was a thiel fellow but there are other thiel fellows like the founder of ethereum is a thiel fellow which is a cryptocurrency founder of figma figma is a design tool very popular yeah. over the years so a bunch of these people who are mm. exceptionally successful came mm. to the fellowship and everybody has very similar backgrounds right mm. young people they were rebel without a cause wanted to make a positive difference but coming back thiel fellowship is one In India, there's something called the Young India Foundation, uh, Young India Fellowship, mm. very popular YI Fellowship. I think mm. it's called. It's very popular, great. Uh, similar, impact. not similar. It's mm. very different. Mm. Uh, but again, something that allows young people to be able to pursue their aspirations. But this one, I think, only invites graduates post uh, undergrad. So basically, after that, if you want to sort of be a part of the fellowship, I think something very different is Teach for India. I think that's another way of making sure. Basically, what are the communities where you can find people? Yeah. who are slightly rebellious yeah. who are trying to do something new in life who are creative who want to do something new it may have been art for you it may have been um being in um uh, you know uh the company of inditex and and their uh you know ecosystem so i think fundamentally just finding people around you mm-hmm. that's education act ha huh, that's education right you learn from them and it also allows you to get it in any university you, you don't get it in any university So I think that's the third one. I am doing something with something that's called the Naropa Fellowship. It started mm. by the Drukpa uh, of Ladakh. Again, of course, uh, the person who's involved between Ashoka University, Naropa, Harappa is all the same. So Ashish, you know, uh, Ashish, and this uh, other person, mm. Pramod Sena, is the uh, person who's involved. And I think a similar fellowship. Mm. And what I have done with them is started a Naropa Ritesh Fellowship, where we basically these are mostly hilly terrain. kids gotten out of college want to do something new mm. so i give them equity free debt free grants mm. because the thiel fellowship changed my life so mm. i thought can i help make difference same with the zepto kids they got a 40 lakh grant they built zepto on the back of that really yeah was that the game changer after 12 thiel thiel fellowship was a game changer i think that changed my life were you like a great student up until that point like first rank types not first rank i think third fourth second to fourth rank in my until 10th grade same thing yeah hmm. uh but 11th 12th grade not so much no why uh, because um, so i think until 10th grade i was in raigada hmm. post 10th grade most kids go outside for education right uh so my elder three siblings one went to um i think uh, other o- towns in odisha only bigger towns um because in our town the only way to get that was one college and th- that wasn't like most preferred route hmm but parents had some savings because elder three siblings most of them got one of their degrees through uh, uh, what is called scholarship mm. so parents had some savings so i said rebel hain so i want to go to kota rajasthan mm. kota is r- much more expensive to send a child to than that of somewhere in odisha right mm. because you have to send uh, uh, three day trains both sides so you are the kota factory i am i am a part of the kota factory production So during those two years, I used to sort of, um, uh, you know, intern in small companies and so on. While of course education, education, I was not the first second ranker, but still reasonably good ranker. So I was not like I was terrible uh, in terms of impact. So parents were generally comfortable. So I was not the quota guy, top kids. I was medium. So I did all right. So twelfth grade ke beech mein hi, around right after twelfth grade, jo chhe mahine hai. that is when i applied for the thiel fellowship and became a thiel fellow 
the first time i got a call so i applied uh, because i heard about the peter thiel and the apply this i am not where is this thiel you though? apply online online you apply online and it's just dig- online class digital application no, no it's not a class you have to submit when you make the application it's just a bunch of questions bunch of qu- about like, what business do you want to build what did you say oyo i didn't call it oyo then but i co- but effectively the idea was the oyo idea which i uh, proposed the accommodation with some standardization that we can provide um i think fundamentally post those questions there was no other asian resident who had become a fellow before me so i gave myself 0% chance to become a fellow but i enjoyed the questions so i answered them then interview started so there were telephone interviews so the product head of twitter will get on an interview with you so for a 12th grader to be on an interview with people like those was a big deal and i would do it like on a feature phone of one of the friends barsati friends who was staying next to me one day i get this call which is you are among the top 40 candidates selected and will fly you to the us and you can pitch and 20 would get selected post the pitch i was like so excited about it the reason was not because i thought i'll become a thiel fellow i still give myself 0% chance it was my first flight and international flight trip i would ever get for free somebody else was paying for it mm. so mai to us jane se itna khush tha ki mujhe laga ki life is made mm. right so but again coming back to how parents were uh, helpful i got like a few days mm. in that period mom got the passport made i mm. didn't have a passport mm. right for us visa i didn't know was so hard and yeah. I, and ye this is an example of why i believe that genuinely i am lucky mm. so i was told biometric karna hai aur ja ke ek letter unke they'll send a letter you give the letter you get the visa and you have to go to delhi or bombay or no something. i was in delhi only so it is even easier so i got when biometric the next day was the interview mm. now interview i thought that letter dekh ke stamp mil jata hai so i basically was wearing shorts had my hair all over and i reached the us embassy and i see people are wearing jackets ties have big books interviewing each other mm. so i thought maybe they have come here for some job interview some different work my work is different <laughs> <laughs> that's the level of coming to self confidence mm. very self confident mm. i reached the in- interview lady and right like as as i get closer it line agar aap dekhoge usmc bahar se lagta hai mm. so bahar se i thought it different but andar mein reaching the counter we were all in the same counter path so i am starting to feel it something different but i was still convincing myself that they are making your hair peter thiel has given me a letter mm. in my mind i thought that you know he must like the visa will be given immediately so the lady asks what's your purpose of visit to the us so i say i want to drop out by becoming a thiel fellow she listens drop out and in her mind goes this guy is going to go to the gas station mm. <laughs> next <laughs> that's his plan uh-huh. and weirdly is being honest about it also <laughs> <laughs> i only learned this later because us samay to mujhe lag raha tha then she says uh do you have uh like if that's the purpose of visit is there an education also you want to pursue mm. i say yes thiel fellowship can be considered as education mm. So she said do you have any documentation for it mm. I said there is this letter mm. So she said uh unfortunately it doesn't seem like we can give you the visa but we can't also return you our, the passport So typically if they reject the visa they give you back the passport mm. So I said you can't reject the visa first off And second my flight is day after tomorrow mm. So you return the passport to me anyway mm. She says unfortunately that's not how it works And shuts down the window I came back home I cried like crazy because I thought that mm. US zindagi mein shayad ek hi baar jaane ka mauka milta because aise to kuch hone nahi wala tha aur seekhne ka bada dil tha mujhe and before that I had cold emailed so many people I had cold emailed like 100 people saying that I want to come see like your office or so on like I had cold emailed god bless him Tony Shea of Zappos and so on saying ki mujhe aakar ke aapka office mm. dekhna hai so anyway long story short mm. um, you know uh, I wrote to the Thiel fellowship as well saying that they didn't give me the visa can you write a letter to them so that you, there is some credibility they wrote a letter then the embassy was nice to later give me the visa i got into the flight next day even the flight was a weird thing i had a lufthansa flight the lufthansa flight got cancelled mm. the fellowship was nice to book a british airways right after mm. so i think this fundamentally for me i feel like this long story is just to say that mm. anything could have gone wrong in this mm. the visa could not have come the flight would not have uh, 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 you know happened something could have gone wrong so in life we forget when we reach to this point mm. there were probably 200 things that had to go right 
And if that one thing did not go right, mm. you'd probably be in a very different place. You see serendipity a little bit more than usual. Yes. True, true belief in that? I have true belief. I have true belief in um, if you work hard, mm. um, uh, opportunities will come your way, um, which otherwise would not have. What have been the most serendipitous events that you can remember? If you were to name just two. Just two. The US Embassy, I'm guessing, is one. Yes, so that's one. I'll try the second one. I think the second one is, actually, I'll say two, uh, two more. Mm. One is um, possibly how I met Anuj. Most people don't know Anuj. Anuj and I started OYO together. Mm. So before OYO, I, I was running Oravel for six months. Mm. And then I flipped to OYO. He joined me in Oravel. And then we together pivoted to make it OYO. He's so, still with you? He's still with me. Mm. So... Um, at that, uh, when I was running Uravel, it was me and one intern. Both of us used to run the company. Sahil was the intern. Sahil, of course, had told me when he was interviewing mm. that after two to three years, once he makes enough money, he will set up a restaurant mm. and he'll leave me. Mm. So true to the fact, three years later, he left and now runs fantastic couple of restaurants in Bombay. Mm. Um, so Anuj calls, he, wherever he figures about Uravel, he calls the call center. Sahil picks up. He thinks it's a big company. So Anuj says, can, I, can you connect me to the chairman's office? Mm. Sahil says, I don't chairman, but Ritesh is sitting in my bagel, maybe he can tell you. So, he hands over the phone. All of us have gone through these stories, uh, right? Oh, we have. So, I, have. I get the phone and, I keep, and I'm telling Sahil on the side, that chairman is calling me. So, I'm calling him. It's good. It's good that we can be chairman. But anyway. It's good. Right? And Anuj speaks and, you know, he, he's opposite of me, right? Like he went to ITBHU, built his business during school, sold it, uh, uh, went to UIUC for some internship, but then had come and joined a consulting company and was hating it. So he wanted to leave it and build something. Mm. So we speak for 50 minutes and he said, I have explored Airbnb in the US. This is my view. So I, I made as much copious notes as I could. And at the end, I said that those, it's been great talking to you, but I can't afford you. But I learned so much. The day I can afford you, we'll chat again. Mm. Then he says, but I'm, I'm happy to meet you. I said, if you want to meet after hearing what you've heard, be my guest, please come. Mm. So he came. Again, we spent an hour. Mm. I learned more. Mm. At the end, I again said, but mm. uh, can't uh, afford you. Mm. So he said, there is this thing called ESOP. I don't need salary. I'm willing to offer no salary. I'll in fact put some money if required. But you give me ESOPs. So I said, this is a great thing. Without salary, you will work. So uh, I said, perfect, done, ESOPs. So he said, I want whatever, I think, I don't remember, three and a half or four percent ESOP. Mm. I said, perfect, done, no problem. Hi nahi hai. Koi salary is not taking salary, it's like a person who is working with a person. So that was my concept of learning of ESOP in the first time. Mm. Like ki, the appreciation. Yes, I mean, what do you say? Well put. <laughs> like depreciation of yours, correct, mm. correct. So I thought this is fantastic. Later I recognized that, you know, this is probably one of the best decisions he made. But for me, it was a, because for the first time I saw what working with somebody who was, who understood process, who understood systems, who could document, what did I, that look like? It was before that I only worked with interns. I didn't have appreciation of anybody else outside of that. Mm. Second is Bejul, right? Like I was in the, during the TL fellowship in the US. Mm. Um, he, Bejul was also in the US because Lightspeed has a, uh, like their main office in the US. I met him uh, uh, and at the end of it, we said that it's, it's been great meeting each other. Mm. We'll reconnect sometime. Mm. They kept doing their work in India. We had one OYO hotel then. We then opened another. So they visited those hotels. They visited other hotels. They met the property owner. Then one day called us saying that we want to try and do something with you. Um, I think Bejul also, I think other than Thiel Fellowship, Peter Thiel, is, uh, Bejul changed my life. I think he was, uh, I think... The other person who I try to emulate a lot is, I think, Bejul. I think mm. he has a sense of calm. He liked this. Uh, I, 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 I think so. Mm. Uh, and, and I think uh, he, he's uh, genuinely, like feedbacks, for example, communication. I'll give you an in interesting example of an uncomfortable conversation. I brought it up, right? So we had a call center, mm. like most companies. Mm. And I used to be the call center person who would pick up calls. Just don't call, I make the booking. And I used to love it because you speak to customer directly. Such an amazing job, right? So even after they invested, I kept doing that job. 
So he would invite me every month for lunch. So I'd go to that lunch. So he feed me very well. At the end, he says, "Suritesh, I hear you're loving your call center job." I says, "Great. I listen to customers and so on." So he says, and he's uh, like, at the end, that so that's great. We found the call center head of OYO. We should now start finding the CEO. Should we start a process? And I said, "Look, I get it. I get it that." what i am doing is not my job and we will recruit someone but i think ability to say something in such a nice kind way that at that room you feel like you know it's a objective feedback but when you walk out you feel that that was a pretty intense feedback uh, is something i have learned from him i guess and beyond 12th what happened thieves fellowship yeah thieves fellowship $1000 came back to india Child so i was there in the be. us for 4 5 months hmm. Uh, lived in a hacker house with other Thiel fellows, mm. um, but came back to India in 2013 mid. Mm. Uh, we uh, that was we was me Anuj and couple of interns at that mm. point of time, and then sort of uh, at at the similar time, Lightspeed chose to invest a few months later. Mm. Lightspeed invested, I think, 3.5 crores at a 8 crore valuation mm. uh, back then. It's a huge deal for us. I think uh, I had never seen. a crore together in a bank account in my life mm. um uh, before that so it put just a sense of accountability that now you have to like make good that there's somebody else who's willing to commit so much capital behind you and i think uh, this since 2013 um end roughly or 2014 early is when we really started growing the business and um uh, you know we've we've continued in that path we've gone through our highs and lows as you uh may have observed you read uh that there were obituaries there was ki acha bhi to like i feel what helped you deal with the lows what personality trait look i think um two things right um fundamentally one we got more love than we deserved mm. so if you remember that we were getting too much appreciation sometimes mm. but sometimes we also got beaten down a lot more i think the trait of for a That's 20 true. year old um for them to have that one day at college when they become the superstar and next week they are considered like an outcast mm. i think um i think the trait is um uh, always being an optimist about the future and knowing that things will change uh either positively or negatively i think i would say optimism and coming to terms with the cyclical nature of life. yes and and coming to awareness of cyclicality yeah i would say that w- one needs to just be um aware and comfortable that uh if an amitabh bachchan was in crazy debt and everybody wrote him off mm. he can come back to become one of the wealthiest stars in less than 20 years most mm. bankable star one of the most bankable stars and that doesn't happen as an exception that's pretty much the norm mm. for anybody who can uh, mm. stick their neck out and continue so i think if you are a 20 year old mm. and i have gone through this many times where everybody around you thought that you are a done deal mm. the seven days when i was kept out of school mm. um and i was a prefect at that point of time so being a prefect and being told that out you are uh, uh, suspended from school for some time mm. so that that is my unique um, con- con- contrarian perspective that i've always had mm. that i would be a prefect but i'd also be slightly rebellious mm. uh, which is sort of what you also mentioned earlier in the perspective of saying that you have this contrarian side to yourself mm. so come i think at, in those times i think uh, it's very easy to give up mm. and i was told that i'll not give you the certificate of the prefect because of this mm. A tough time is like a messy room. You have to tidy it up again because you want to live back in this space. So you have to be absolutely comfortable oh. that you know there will be good Give days in the future and there will be bad days and there will be good days. And if you're having great days, mm. you should know that the bad days are coming. Mm. And whatever you can do to prepare for it mm. is better to do it. Are you guys also optimistic, Gazal? Are you unreasonably optimistic? Not unreasonably optimistic. I am optimistic mm. because what I believe in it is. if it's good it won't last if it's bad it won't last hmm. similar yeah. yeah you i'm very optimistic actually it's also your life's own behavior which gives you this this built up factor on this i mean you take a loan and you think you will pay back or not and instead of 15 years you pay back in 4 years it's all 
every expression of your journey and everything that you've achieved and mm. and gone through gets you more and more clear sight for the next uh, episode that you want to attack but i think that's a fundamental difference i think mm. all entrepreneurs are optimistic but and if it's risk, risk taking and risk taking mm. but i feel that the persevering optimist types are mm. the ones who create long term success mm. i think the most people i have found around myself mm. uh, like i feel and to your point nikhil i also believe that not believe i am i know that i am not the uh, uh, you know uh, best engineer best sales person best finance person any of those things right but i feel in our industry all the competitors we had mm. whenever the tough times came mm. they gave up mm. the only thing different about us funnily this is the first thing i wrote about you when she was speaking relentless mm. yeah. right? have you ever read any machiavelli no the european chanakya in a in a way no no i've you heard s- about him of course he seem to embody a lot of what he says you know if you all have watched the movie 12 fail no not yeah? yet but i've heard some incredible yeah, you should absolutely it. watch it it really? is amazing yeah so really? if you watch that movie you will hear that you will see that that kid comes from chambal hmm. and he had that complex saying that nobody else from chambal hmm. becomes an ips officer hmm. without cheating नहीं नहीं विद चीटिंग भी चीटिंग से आप स्कूल पास हो जाते हैं आईपीएस ऑफिसर तो मतलब कोई परसीव ही नहीं करता है राइट आईपीएस तो मतलब इतना दूर दराज का मतलब वो तो बैंक पीओ नहीं अप्लाई करते हैं राइट तो वहां से आप अगर आईपीएस बन सकते हैं बट एज लीडर्स आई बिलीव पर्सनली दैट बिग हार्ट ट्रम्प बिग ब्रेन एनीथिंग ऑन इट अगेन एवरीथिंग यू आर सी तुम्हारे सोल के अंदर कोई यूरोपियन सोल Okay, bus gayi hai. How did you deal with your father passing away? It was look. I think it I, was. I, I think I messaged you that day. You, you did. The news you did. It, you did. It sounded like a life changing. I think. Uh, I think. Um, look, I think I. I don't think I have fully uh, processed it even today. So I'm still sort of. So There's a Spanish book. It takes three years to recover for a yeah. son. So I think nothing prepares you for a loss of. Um, somebody as close as that okay so you started uh, with the thiel fellowship money with your friend anuj or ravel they became converted to oyo when did the scaling happen first year was very small like i think 2014 we grew from two hotels to maybe 10 15 hotels It's still a lot but not like massive mm. i think the real growth happened from 2014 all the way to 2017 mm. which is where we went from a few hotels in one city to becoming one of the most prominent hotel brands in india mm. in the economy and uh, uh, economy plus kind of segment um 2019 mm. is when the scaling then happened globally mm. we went from being an india brand to becoming a globally prominent brand so for example just in europe we manage 150000 holiday homes so we have a fairly large business in denmark netherlands germany and and few of these geographies so i can relate with getting to these cities out of the flight to your hotel do your job and come back so you don't have no gazal would switch places with you guys any day they talking even. milan madrid <laughs> Hmm. Now I can get Just to do to that for my work. All my, all my Back life. Back in the time, I would have like loved to switch. <laughs> I'm here only. <laughs> mother, in terms of discipline, there's one discipline that I maintain is a holiday every month. Every month. Every month. Every month. Amazing. How long? Like, is, that okay. one I can for the last six, yeah. seven years. How long is the holiday weekend? No, three days, two days, five days, whatever comes. Every month. Every month. That's oh, amazing. Like you That's go out somewhere. Out of the city, out of the if city. If nothing, कुछ नहीं हो रहा तो go to J W Golf Shire and stay in the hotel. Yeah, it's a nice idea. Mm. You were describing post getting funded. Post getting funded, yeah, yeah. So I think 2019 was building. a big global growth. I How think much money did you guys end up raising? A lot, right? Yeah, we raised uh, close to a billion and a half dollars. Overall. Overall, a little over that. Mm. Right. So. already i think in 2019 when we grew this global expansion and we also made an a couple of acquisition i think we were starting to see pains of growth pains of growth meaning how many hotels did you have by then india you said international you mentioned but india similar as we have today i think globe matlab total 15000 ke aas pass hotels have already ho gaye the covid mein we came down now we are bouncing back no, no. so uh, we are fairly sizable business 
Uh, and if I add China, it was more at that point of time, right? So then, uh, so what did growing pains mean? Growing pains mean that natural economics were bad, right? Um, and that was bad in a very unique way. 90% of our hotels were revenue share hotels. 10% were minimum guarantee. Those 10% hotels drove most of the losses and 90% of them were highly margin accretive always. Um, I think the management bandwidth to run a business of that spread. Um, and you never, in reflection, I can say that we grew more than we should have, but at that point of time, it's hard to know when you grew too much because there's no playbook. Like opening 30 stores is good, yeah, 10 stores is good, 20 stores is good. There's no arithmetic to it. And it was never written by us also that this year we'll do that many. Correct. So, uh, so how did you handle that stress of having a billion dollar plus money into the system? Someone's money, right? And Agarwal or Marwadi, you know, for the 20 year old guy. Yes, yes. What's that weight on that shoulder? I mean, I can't even hold that up. Look, I think, uh, and uh, it, how do you it handle is both this? plus accountability. Because once people invest the capital, then they require the monthly update, the regular reviews. You have any questions that can come up. I think fundamentally for me, uh, in the early days especially, to capital nahi raise karna was not a choice because I had no resources. So initial chota wada capital to zaruri tha. I think India leadership sort of happened organically. Uske baad mein jo global expansion tha, that was in my view driven by my own personal belief in impact. Like mujhe, like what drives me every day. Ek hai complex problems. Dusra, how many people's lives I'm touching. That fundamentally, I believe that that makes a positive difference. And good news is that also commercially has a positive impact because the more number of people you are basically impacting allows you to be able to hopefully make some additional outcome. But it came with challenges and there were mistakes made. I have no qualms about saying it. So I started fixing and consolidating 2020 early. You think admitting mistakes early? Sorry? Admitting mistakes early, big part of being successful? I think so. I think admitting mistakes and saying mia kalpa is critical because a lot of times... Early. Early, yes. Uh, the, the reason is, you know, when you're having a... You know, you effectively, as a business leader or an entrepreneur, you have to be able to make decisions. To make decisions, it's critical to have conversations which are authentic and not pretentious. Mm. The only way you can have a non-pretentious conversation is if the elephant is uh, uh, out, out of the room. Mm. If people don't talk about elephant, then you can have many conversations. But if you're able to say that these are the mistakes that were made and you have to be honest about it because it is very... Um, easy to understand hmm. because uh, uh, kathni or karni mein bahut zyada difference nahi hota hai matlab hamare business you can see it right like because you can just come out of this like you can go to indra nagar see at oyo hotel and say like see traces of what i have said there and the other way around in some context right or it's true for all of our businesses that if mistakes are made it will be visible at our stores i think stores. this is also very true for all successful businesses because I see a lot of founders not having the courage to admit that they've made a mistake. And what happens is they try and continue to conceal it because they've pitched it in a certain way. They feel that their word is so strong, it becomes an ego problem and they don't want to, one, admit it. And because of that, they fall into that loop where you're not correct. And the only way to and figure things out is… you become more lonely as is, an outcome. Yeah. Because more and more people sort of desert you. So I believe that admitting mistake early is crucial. And it is also crucial to make sure that you are close to your roots. Mm. I think if you're, uh, when you try to run away from mistakes, mm. it's a very easy way mm. yeah. of running away from reality. Mm. And then you sort of build a world around yourself, which is just entirely. But anyway, I think long story short, I think mistakes were made. I was consolidating. By the time I could fix it, Mr. COVID knocked in the door on the doors. Mm and said, well, uh, you I'll, know, we'll do it faster. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'll make it harder for you. Mm. So imagine I had forward invested that we will, we will, the year before COVID, we grew 300%, right? COVID hits. So you had forward invested for growth. 
you're starting to consolidate, but you're able to fund it partly through the margins you're generating from the current revenues, right? Mm. And partly through external financing. With COVID, 65% of your revenue overnight evaporate, mm. right? So in effect, you have to fund 100% or majority through external financing. There is a limit to the capital available. There's not infinite capital available with anyone, especially for a business that is shrinking. A business that is growing higher, slower, you can debate. But a business is shrunk during COVID. So it was hard on us. Most digital-led brands, right? E-commerce, you can see. Gaming, they look. Any industry, they look. They all saw massive ramp up during COVID. Now Not here, travel. here I am, Not travel. where my revenue is shrink sixty five percent, and people were basically calling right all the entire deck, right from my CXOs to the last person, recruiters calling, saying, "Look, Oyo ka stock ka ab kya hoga nahi pata, company kya hoga nahi pata. Here's two or three x salary jump, aur hamare yahan pe pay cut chal raha hai." And these right. were other travel companies. No, oh, no. Our, our people are not specialists, right? Our people are technology people. So you basically can Got recruit the them across mostly generalists, Got right? It. In terms of construct. So the fungibility of talent is very high mm. with other tech companies. So you see, you have two guna salary. Stock is more than enough. Lifestyle is better. It, you know, things will be much better as an outcome. So I think fundamentally, at that point of time, I feel like that one year. Was probably one of the toughest ones as an operator to drive, but I think at the same time I feel like that one year really transformed our company as well as as the way we think and operate. I think now we become very comfortable being Clean the thirty percent growth company. हमें नहीं बनना है मतलब अभी दो सौ तीन सौ परसेंट ग्रोथ. We are happy about it. I think we have a sense of semblance on what we believe is our cash flow margins. And for us, I think we have a consumer rating expectation below which we will not grow. We have a merchant revenue expectation. Below which will not grow, and we have a margin expectation at the EBITDA and cash flow level. If जब तक ये तीन हैं, we want to grow as quickly as we can. अगर नहीं होता तो we will not grow. I think a lot of these perspectives, I think, would have come anyway over time. Mm. But I think COVID accelerated that significantly without giving a choice. I uh, think I think what you're also saying is a big determinant of success is the ability to get punched, not necessarily punch, yeah. and be sanguine about it and go about. Yeah. life yeah big precursor to success right but i think any Toh startup bade, journey you got to like be okay to get beat up yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. will definitely Oto. get hmm. beaten up how fast are you able to bounce back i think that's yeah. that's and good and you don't kind of like react or yeah yeah like you would have uh, i've never seen you like speak back on social media yeah. defend yourself in a weird manner in a defensive manner right No, I think uh, personally, I think I have uh, learned to take criticism in a very in, like, I, and I believe it will be very valuable for other young people listening also. Mm. M- like, if if I read some of the business leaders, some people say that I don't read news about us. Mm. Actually, I am quite the contrary. I read everything. I have no problem reading everything, mm. but I can read everything and feel comfortable that usme se noise kya hai or signal kya hai. Mm. So I think fundamentally, criticism can be constructive. Mm. Or it can be just noise. Noise never sticks mm. because noise by design. So if there is something like that, I am reading about myself that I don't know about, right? Like there be some news of saying that, "Acha, uh, Oyo is buying some business in Southeast Asia or some business in Middle East." I know there is no sachai to it. So some people speculate, "Oh, that's over. It's done." It's done. Or something will come about. Well, uh, you know, Ritesh is going to do something new very mm. soon. So I feel like it's a noise; it will not stick. What is your relationship with Masayoshi Son? How did it get inculcated? Has it soured? Look, I think uh, you asked who's uh, son. I uh, you know I often call him Son Son. Given uh, in Japan, you typically add a son at the end uh, out of respect. So I think Son Son um, is first generation entrepreneur. Um, Invested in Alibaba quite early, built his own telecom business, which is now probably the most profitable business in Japan and one of the most profitable telecom business in the world uh, in terms of construct. Uh, and then invested in Alibaba, which did very well, and then set up multiple software inclusion funds and Arm and few others. I think so. That's the context behind who he is. I think um, I would basically correlate it as SoftBank's relationship, and within that, of course, talk about Sun Sun. I think 
I got introduced to SoftBank first time in 2015 or 2016. Hmm. Right when we were in that growth phase, we were in three cities then, just starting to take off. So uh, I think Nikesh introduced us, and Nikesh did the work. Uh, he's now the CEO of Palo Alto Networks. The deal was more or less agreed between Nikesh and the broader SoftBank team. There was a broader SoftBank and SoftBank team that, uh, at that time. They used to invest on the balance sheet. Hmm. So that's how we uh, got introduced to each other hmm. in the uh, first place. So before the final investment decision is made, is you have to uh, go and present to Sonsan, and hmm. he approves finally. So I went to uh, Japan. I was again very excited to go to a new country. I'm so I'm generally the person who's always very happy and excited about new places and new things, right? Like. You know now the Shark Tank episodes are airing, mm. so people, there's some trolls saying that you know why are you smiling all the time? Mm. I'm just generally happy being there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? You're smiling even today. That's that's who you are. Uh, so I'm generally like uh, you know whenever I'm in new places, I'm happy. I, mm. I, I'm excited. So uh, Sonsan comes. I make a quick presentation. Mm. So he explains two or three things, which is quite fascinating to me. I think first thing he mentions is that. If I were you, I would go as full stack as possible rather than being more and more marketplace. Which is that I would do more to control the experience. Mm. Uh, do you mean own the hotel? No, not own the hotel, but basically sort of. Can you potentially like delivery companies have a service provider who goes and delivers? Can the front office manager be yours? Right. So that uh, you can have slightly greater control over the experience. Of course, there are economics of it which can be complicated. Mm. The second uh, or or beneficial depends. Second thing he says is you're very early, uh, but I think um, you know if you are in this growth path, making sure that you continuously track the consumer satisfaction loop closure mm. will be crucial before you ramp up or down. Mm. There will be times when the consumer feedbacks will continue to be positive, and it, he said it will most definitely happen. Did happen to us that. The feedbacks will be great all the th all through when you're growing, and then suddenly one day you'll see that you've grown greater than usual. The consumer feedback is not showing that great outcomes. He said that will necessarily happen. When it does happen, you should consider pausing. Mm. And the third he said is that you are the CEO, so you make the decisions. Mm. Uh, you will receive great ideas from mm. all our uh, advisors, but eventually, if your company does well or not. Mm. You'd be responsible. Mm. All three made complete sense, mm. but you only appreciate, like he said, tuition fees. Mm. You only appreciate when you made enough mistakes. You don't hear, listen, or appreciate those just purely mm. by words. Mm. So very wise words, though. Mm. So that's how the investment happened with SoftBank. Mm. Um, and then, of course, the very quickly Nikesh moved on, and I think ever since after that, uh, Rajiv, Munish, and that sort of cohort uh, became our primary partners from uh, from SoftBank over the years. And our relationship was very much, you know, we meet in a quarter, review mm. the business, go through, and once in a year, uh, you know, you also get invited to go present to Sonsan. Mm. And I think the one unique takeaway that I have personally about Sonsan that I think most of the people have not talked about is people see Sonsan primarily as an investor, right? Financial investor, and so on. I think. He's at his heart an entrepreneur first and an investor second, mm. and the depth and the attention to detail that he has, his creativity and his sense of sort of um, coming up with new ideas are, mm. in my view, what makes him special in the mm. first place. Mm. Insane, insane so curiously, stories. Curiously, curious uh, ability, curious uh, without an ego. That's a good way to put it. You've given me so much. I'm, I'll tell you from my side. I learned. So much from you guys, uh, in so many different facets. Some that are evident, some that are non-evident. Like the father thing. My father passed away, like just now, thirty days, thirty-five days ago. So, so sorry to hear. No, but your journey, one month, three months, six months. I was asking you six years. Very interesting. Okay, so I'm going to put down success parameters, add to the previous two, and say. Admitting mistakes early, very important. Curiosity, extremely, extremely important. Probably something I resonate with the most. Contrarian, very nature of a startup. I think a company begins with something contrarian, especially if you're starting young. Clarity of thought, rigid, particular. All three of you said that. 
With you, nuance, I would add in a very Taoist way, likability and niceness is so underrated in the world right now. Like a lot of people I choose to work with, I choose to partner with. I think today I have the privilege and it's also such an important metric to me that I need to like hanging out with them. Mm. At the core, they need to be nice people. Mm. So I think people undermine the importance of how likable and nice you are as a person. I think it's incredibly valuable as a business. All of you said again, you with standing outside, uh, Guzzle stood outside a toy store. Manish was willing to bend, bend his back and go ask somebody something that other people might not have. No ego, which also came from you. Again, incredible. Always be selling. Even when they were answering their questions, you were selling and plugging all your rooms. I think that again is incredibly important. Uh, delaying gratification. Indifference is cool. Both of these, again on top of the list. So what we're trying to like arrive at today is whenever a young 21-year-old boy or girl wants to know what makes startup founders, people like yourself successful, they get generic bullshit. They get hardworking. Hard they get sell in this particular manner, use this sales strategy. All of it which is taking away from the core emotion of what is actually working for you guys. So intent here was to ask you non-usual questions, get non-usual answers and hopefully help that 21 year old. I'll run through all three of your main things. Starting with yours, optimism, aware of cyclicality, continuing from where we left off. Serendipity is again a very interesting one, right? Imposter complex is good. A lot of us seem to have it. Insecurity is good. As long as neither of these lead to inaction, but they lead to action, right? Yeah. It can't. That's very important. Yeah. It's called good sense of insecurity. Yeah. Yeah. Creativity. This is again something that is often overlooked. You defined creativity in a very nice manner. Rewarding loyalty, reprimanding disloyalty. Very important. Yeah, true. Forgiving yeah. but not forgetting. Yeah. Confidence in how you look post 12. This could come via playing a sport, yoga, sleeping for eight hours. Extremely important because you're confident about how you look and how you feel about yourself. You're likely more easily confident about what you're selling. Fair? Sleep, holiday, all of this comes into the same thing. Avoidant attachment type, good for startups. Bad for relationships overall, but good, good for good starting for a company. I think I'm like that. Like I have a tendency, I, I fear sympathy in others' eyes for me. I fear being vulnerable so much that if I am going through something, I will hide it. Mm. Like something bad happening in my life, some bad event. I would rarely mention it. Yeah. But that's... Yeah, it's bad. But that's bad, bad in relationships, very unhealthy. But for a company, maybe it's... To start a company, I don't know how that's translating. But that seems to be common to a lot of people. Even, even, uh, even with your company, is that, is that good? It's healthy if you're not emotionally because attached to the company. No, but when, when times get tough and I feel that I have that emotional connect with my company where I still, I'll be like, I will figure this out. But if I'm... And for which I also end up being vulnerable in front of my leadership team, being open about what's happening and trying to figure it out all together because I can't do it alone. If I don't have that, I feel that, how, how do you look at it? Actually, very interesting nuance. I feel like I get stoic about things that are not working because I feel like in life, 10 things are not working at the same time. So I take that thing which is not working and my avoidant type puts it in a compartment and I come back to it after I fix three, four of the 10 things. 
Hmm. But for that second, what hmm. works for me is compartmentalizing. It's very like uh, stoic, nihilistic in its yeah. origin. That seems to be a common trait as well. And what made it even more interesting is one is bootstrapped, one is a public company and one is a largely funded company. So we covered broad spectrum, what we think are the prerequisites to be successful in a startup. I think Manish had something else. Story, very, very important. Almost as important as a product. We view your story, even if it is em embellished in the very beginning, in a manner that is most appealing to the audience you're try trying to cater to. Fair? Pay attention to detail. Every little detail. Perfume, music, what else did you say? The tiny details, the horizontal stitch. The creative stitch. of the perfume and how it's yeah. going to come to life. Not having the logo on the chest. On, on, on Indian the chest. waist sizes are two inches higher yeah. than… Be rigid on that as well. Yeah. People are here to change you. Yeah. Another big, big commonality between everybody who is a successful entrepreneur is take risk. Risk taking ability seems to be one par higher in this crowd of successful ones versus everybody else. Having 10 crores and taking a 37 crore loan, leaving home uh, and doing uh, art, which is the most counterintuitive thing that anybody would do beyond a course in NIT learning to be a computer programming multiple teacher. Times. Yeah, multiple, multiple times. times. Uh, going to New York in your first year of marriage. All by myself. All by yourself. While Leaving I had moved out of Chandigarh. The only other city was Delhi. <laughs> yeah. For Ritesh, I can't even begin. There's so much. Like, so much in terms of taking risk outside of what a conformist, conventional, normal 20-year-old boy of your age would have done. What this paper misses out is once you incorporate or try to inculcate some of this, the underlying differentiator between A and B and C and D is luck at the very core of it. I think you have to come to terms. Every single entrepreneur has to come to terms with that. Yeah. But you know what I feel is a bigger challenge than going from zero to one is finding the gumption in you to reinvent yourself after the ecosystem around you has built up your ego into a bubble mm -hmm. to come to terms with the fact that you have become complacent faster than the market tells you. Yeah. 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 I Very think, true. and that's how the incumbents lead, Very right? True. Yeah. Like Facebook's great, greatest example is ditching the metaverse. And then flipping back and making Instagram the heart of their business, yeah. which has, of course, now become into Comes a. Comes back like, to creativity. Look, last one week, Facebook. like if you look at the Facebook stock price. Facebook looks like Nav Bharat and. Should, <laughs> we, should we add that surrounding yourself by people who are able to say, Outsiders often who are able to say to your face, you're screwing up. Yeah, I think that's it very important. It is very important. Yeah. I think that's extremely important. At the end of every episode we do, this one we are doing after a long time. We have not put anything out for two months. At the end of every episode, uh, we pay forward a little bit of the good luck we have <clears> gotten. <throat> and we fund uh, someone young, someone we were talking to through this episode. Uh, a 21, 22 year old boy or girl. So we'll all uh, commit a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. We'll have a process where we open it up. Like you got your Thiel Fellowship. We'll try to create our own fellowship. That's nice. And we'll get applications. We'll share all the applications with everyone here. And we are arrive at who should get the fellowship or the investment from all four of us together. Perfect. This process will take a little bit of time, like 15, 20 days, but we'll run it. What if we call it WTF Founders Fellowship? Yeah. It's a nice name. Have we done this before? WTF Fund, yeah, yeah. We do it. At the end of each episode, we do something or the other. We did one for influencers. We did one, we did, we paid a couple of charities, EV sector. So startup. how about we, four of us, Yeah. we all give something small, like 10 lakhs each or 20 lakhs each to four founders. At the end of it, uh, as a grant. Yeah. What do you think? Works. Perfect. You guys are okay with that? Absolutely. Should we do 20 lakhs each? 20 lakhs each. Charging. And we'll we'll put like a like a draft 
application that they can put out and we'll all four of us review it Perfect. however we can find time and we can all pick one each Perfect. Done. Done. Yeah. Very nice. Done. Super. Thank you, and guys. And hopefully someday one of down. them will be a guest in your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the Exacto guys. Absolutely. Thiel Fellowship. It could or even be you. <laughs> could be uh, any one of us. Yeah. Uh, which we will help support. So I'm, Done. I'll be very happy. Thank you guys so, so much for uh, coming an and spending so much time. Thank you. Like Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nikhil. This we have to do the, one. Be the longest podcast <laughs> that I would ever shoot in my life. I think. Do you guys realize in in our attempt to define the prerequisites of a successful entrepreneur that a 21 year old can emulate? We've been speaking for eight hours without a real break, really. Eight? Yeah, it's 4 a.m. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, I have to leave then. I, my flight is at 5:15. Oh God! Seriously? You saying really? Really? <laughs> yeah, okay, the oh, last. So we are definitely not you're, getting you're the not eight hours sleep. But you're not getting the flight. <laughs>